Um. Hey guys, and uh, welcome to our week five Twitch show, mm-hmm. the art show with uh, I'm Simon, and this is Tim. I'm Tim, and we're back again to do another another show this week and kind of go over a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we've got a special guest this week. Yep, um, special operative word being special. <laughs> um, Tyler Bartley. Yeah. So, um, and his his current league concept artist at Bungie. Um, so yeah, say hello, Tyler. <laughs> Am I on? You are. On. You're I on. think so. Ah. Hey, everyone. <laughs> How you going? Um, I guess I'm Tyler. Tyler Bartley. You can look me up. Um, I'm one of the original CDW people, I guess. Mm-hmm. I was the first TA at <laughs> CDW, yep. I guess. I was Tim's very first TA. Yep. You can attest to that. And the best TA. <laughs> no better. Um, well, we don't even have TAs anymore, so... Really? I don't even get a TA. I gotta go and stroll over there, turn the lights on by myself. Yeah. If you if you want to if you want to if you want to come back, (laughs) anytime, buddy, you come back and. (laughs) (laughs) I would love to TA your class. Um, all right. So I guess I'm from Australia. Obviously, um, I've known Simon for it's been a while. I think Simon was a lecturer. (laughs) One of my lectures at university, um, I've hung around CDW ever since. I guess I forever. Oh, forever. Oh, um, hang on, hang on, Tyler. I think we've. Um, I think there's a there's a person in the chat called Pete Draws. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Just read me off the question. Uh, like, what is it? There's no <laughs> question. <laughs> All right, so we've got another like CDW instructor in the chat here. Peter Yong is in there too. So. He likes yeah, to uh, yeah. he likes to give Tyler a lot of shit. So <laughs> what did he say? Nothing. He hasn't oh, said anything right. yet. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. So anyway, so so what we're doing, what we normally do is we're going to go over some of the work that we've been doing, you know, this week, mm-hmm. and kind of like our all our usual stuff. But we've got Tyler here. It's pretty late in the US at the moment, so it's like mm. two a.m. in the morning almost. Yep. And um, yeah. so what we might do first is Tyler can go through some of his work that he's got yep. and kind of be working on, and then. You know, Tim and I can share some of our stuff here, and mm-hmm. and then we'll maybe have a break, um, and then Tyler's probably going to go to bed after. <laughs> but um, who knows? I could stick around. I had a coffee just before. Second and wind. A bit energized. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. And if you have some questions in the in the chat, then um, then yeah, just uh, apart from Pete, you can't ask yeah, any questions. No. Yeah. But anyone else, if you got questions, let us know. <laughs> we'll read them out to Tyler, and he can answer them. So yeah. Any questions about? You know, portfolio, what you think you should include, mm-hmm. what, what do people kind of like at studios, how is it like working at a studio, all that kind of stuff, just mm-hmm. send it through. No specific game-related stuff because they can't talk about anything. So. <laughs> yeah. More art stuff. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to share my screen. So, Are what, you working on Halo uh, 2 at the moment? <laughs> Halo 2? What's that? Uh, is, What's that? It, is that what you're working on at the moment, Halo 2? <laughs> what are you talking about? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to share my screen right now. So, if people are unfamiliar with me, I'll just run through some work real quickly. Um, if my computer just, you know, it just might die, look at it. It's just like struggling. So, I guess I would characterize myself as more of a character design focused artist. So, all my stuff tends to be kind of figurative in nature Mm -hmm. um you know i love sci-fi um maybe why i'm at bungie um i like drawing techie dudes different mixtures of materials and weapons and stuff so i mean some of these are for myself this was done for vainglory game it's a skin of an existing character which was a really interesting kind of task to tackle um you know, I worked with uh, an instructor we had at CDW, Carlo, for that one, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some more soldier stuff. This is more like a, a workflow kind of thing where I was trying to work out an effective way to do some kind of variations on a guy. And I'll run through a PSD real quickly and you can see how I split up my file and, and group it all together to kind of get some interesting yeah, variations. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, and just, you know, some people with guns. 
I guess mm-hmm. that's the whole thing. That's what yep. people thought were people yep. with guns. In the future. You know, in the future. <laughs> in the future. People with guns and sneakers. And yep. what's that? It's a gun. Yep. So, I mean, that's kind of... <clears throat> and creatures. So, I mean, that's kind of the stuff I do. Um, I guess today's episode was... You guys mentioned it was studies focused. So, I quickly grabbed... Mm some studies that I've done in the past. You know, I used to do a page of these each day. Yep. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, so, so firstly, so firstly, about... we, um, we, we didn't really sort of say, but um, like kind of the, the discussion topic for t- today was like kind of um, doing studies and how they can help or not help or what to do, what not to do, mm-hmm. all those types of things, <clears throat> how they can be sure. done usefully. And probably all three of us have a slightly different opinion of, yep. you know, how to do it, what I'd, to do it, what I'd, do I'd it. say Tyler is probably, of the three of us, the person who's probably done the most studies. Um, <laughs> and so you, you probably have the, probably the, the most actual kind of information to, to give. But yeah, like keep keep telling us about what these are and, 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 you know, how many of them you did and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so basically um, the, the way I kind of approach, I mean, the way I've done studies in the past now has changed quite dramatically and for these ones it was specifically I wanted to work out a process that I could translate into my per- like into my work mm-hmm. and personal work like a, a, a systematic approach to it so you will see in these studies and in my work it's exactly the same process and it's line work flats underneath the line work flat color and then clip in like an overlay layer and then you know painting all within this one shape so i mean make it shiny make it shiny i mean do come on now it's armor make it shiny <laughs> so this is just a selection i'll do one of these a day i did that for maybe a hundred and something days i don't know it's pretty it's yep. pretty intense lots of carpal tunnel yeah um yeah th- this this was how like my most recent kind of way of approaching kind of studies where I don't know if we can zoom in. You can just see they're kind of loose. So and, with, uh, were these from photos? Not... What, sorry? Were these from, yeah, photos? from photos? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so just Usually like... Usually reenactors, I look up reenactors a lot because, yep. you know, they take time and care to craft their kind of armor and stuff. And yep. So, and then I'd be remiss if I didn't include on my computer is... A Chiagian. Look at this. <laughs> is this still there the same? Hey, is is hey, it the same? <laughs> nice. That's a draw Giga, you know, RIP. Yep. But yeah, and then, and then like doing studies of like fashion and stuff to um kind of, if this, uh, if you know, to kind of implement into my own work. And yep. That, that's kind of how yep. my latest kind of way of studying stuff. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so that's a kind of quick rundown of what I do. I mean... Yep. That's yeah. that's Tyler Bartley in, in a nutshell. <laughs> Sorry? <What's> that? <laughs> that's Tyler Bartley in a nutshell. That's me in a nutshell. So click that off. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> well, did you have some Photoshop stuff? Did you have some bits in there? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Let, let's have a look. So, yeah, show, show us how you actually do that. Yeah. So how do I do it? it? You know, it's pretty. I think I think it, you know, I try and make it as simple for myself as I can. So I actually break the body up into like different parts. I'll do the legs separately to the body, mm-hmm. and then on up whatever sits on top. You know, yep. kind of back to front. Yep. But what this lets me do is like create a bunch of different variations. Because if, if you, I mean, if you take this legs layer, I have the bag separately on the legs. I could then move that over to another variation, you know. Yep. Um, I, I, you know, it's, it's just, for me, it made so much sense in a work environment when people kind of want lots of variations. So, I mean, I can create kind of a, a lot of different kind of variations just by doing this kind of method. Yep. So, I mean, real basically, if we, you know, 
if I turn this burst off, actually, it's all flat color, right? Like this is yep. just all flat <clears throat> with the line lines on top. And then I use this as a mask and just clip, you know, and people, people know this stuff, just clip an overlay. And I just yep. paint with black, right? like just black on an overlay. And then, you know, another overlay maybe. Yep. And then another one for a drop shadow because, you know, I've got like this vest on top. And basically that's it for everything. And I know where I am within my layer structure. So, you know, I've got one variation and then I can quickly knock out another one. Yep. And and then the beauty of this is because when everything's on a flat, sorry, I've got this, oh, let me turn this thing off. That's better. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. So everything's flat <laughs> underneath, right? All the all the rendering is on the overlay layer, which means yep. it affects the colors underneath. So I can just grab can just the magic wand. Change select, colors. Say this green, and I can just change it to what, you know, if they're like, hey, what if he's got bright red glow? <laughs> I, yep. I can just change it because all the rendering's on top and it just affects what's underneath. So I mean, mm -hmm. yep. that's kind of how I approach my studies. That's how I do my work at work. That's how I do my personal work. That's kind of... You know, the, everything I do is that exact same process. Yep. So, That's so cool. yeah, creating variations becomes pretty, pretty, pretty easy. You know, I mean, I break things up to look like a light, a radio, a doodly, whatever that is, pouches, you know, and then I can, I've got the freedom to be able to kind of move them around, right? Like yeah. I can just, if I want a pouch over here, I can just like move it. So, do you find uh, a lot. Uh, do you find yeah, that you got to do a lot of that at work or yeah for sure yeah I've been you know yeah th this is this is the kind of way I feel comfortable doing it and you know it works pretty well at work <laughs> mm -hmm. pretty well I put that in air quotation marks um yeah it's you know because I find a lot of time people are unsure about colors and and stuff like that and you can just change it so quickly that they're just like oh my god you just changed it to blue that's amazing and you're like yeah it took me like half a day to do that so, you know. <laughs> so um it's good yeah it's it, it works well at work which i'm pretty pleased about so far fingers crossed so yeah yeah cool yeah awesome i mean that's <clears throat> kind of how i approach all my stuff just you know i feel like i've talked with a bit too much about it <laughs> no that's yeah. good yeah, that's, that's fine no that's cool yeah. Yeah. so there's a question in the chat room that's asking is yes. the clipping mask layer on normal or overlay and i think you were saying it's overlay yeah the rendering is so all usually the... on overlay so yep and it seemed like they were just overlay at 100 percent, and you're just sort of painting on there you know like probably with some sort of brush on low-ish opacity so it's kind of not obviously going um, full black, but it's just kind of glazing over the top and Yeah, for sure. I mean I use the pen pressure, right? Yep. It'll it'll just be full black like that. And um you know, I find it here. It could be soft light. It, it depends really. If you've got lighter colours underneath, overlay actually won't work that great. Sure. Um it works more on the mid range. But if you've got like lighter colors underneath, like a hard light or multiplier works a lot better. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just paint with, you know, just a simple like round brush and um, with black. Yeah. I mean, I don't yep. have my tablet plugged in, so it doesn't <laughs> look very good. But, I mean, that's the basic kind of principle. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I use that for everything. Weapons, <laughs> you know, anything. Yeah. Just, that's kind of how I feel it. Well, I guess, I mean, I guess we'll talk about that a little bit when we come to the talking about studies, but it is interesting that sort of you kind of choose the same technique that you plan to use for everything as your studies, because I feel like that probably mm -hmm. means that if, if the study is like shiny metal, it kind of forces you to say, okay, within this framework, how do I get shiny metal? Do you know what I mean? How do I get exactly. this? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that's when I'd introduce like you know color dodge layers or something to achieve that but yep yeah but that still works within the process right if i need higher specularity on something then i'm gonna have to use something yeah non non-destructively i think that's kind of my yep. whole thing with this is try not to 
you know, if I need to go back and change something, it's it's easy for me to do that. I I, I don't want to destroy stuff. I always feel process. I always feel that that's something that people who as they get more experience tend to do more of because yeah. i think when you're starting out you're just like wow well, well, just do this stuff and get it done yeah, but then sure. kind of as you get a bit more yeah. like you know older <laughs> you start going like oh if i got to change this thing i need to have like a good solution yeah. to do this like yeah 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 and maybe be- maybe because i'm a bit indecisive as well but i work with people who just like it's just one layer right and just and then just do it <laughs> like it's just whatever you feel comfortable with mm. yeah you know? yeah yep. and and i I feel comfortable knowing that I can change stuff like that if I need to. So. Yep. Well, mm-hmm. I, I guess it also yeah. allows you to be a bit more of a designer. Like you can step back and sort of tweak things and actually think yeah, about absolutely. the design. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I, can, I can play with the placement of pouches or weapons or like, or, you know, can I grab the head layer and just, you know, just flip it and like, you know yep. what I mean? So. Yep. So totally. It's almost like kit bashing with my own drawings. <laughs> yep. So, do you ever find that you use some of that stuff on, you know, on other designs? Like, do you grab bits and pieces sometimes, or? Yeah, I do for sure. If, if just as like a starting back, point. Sorry. If if I go back to, I have this kind of girl with a gun, which is oh my god, it's gonna like. <laughs> she's got like this. Oh, what is happening? <laughs> She's got like this gas mask here. Yep. This is actually the same gas mask from this other girl with a gun. Oh, don't don't style. tell anyone that. That's you're giving away your secrets. Everyone will be like, yeah. but it's just like this one's. Pink, oh, it's pink. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> That's work. Hey. Yeah. Right? It's just in a. It's just in a like a folder, and I just drag it into the other documents. So, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, you know. It has come in handy. Before I was working at Bungie, I was working on Star Citizen, and um, it came in handy there, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, being yep. able to swap stuff around, that was really like a proof of concept for me for this process was how can I use this that I've developed in my personal work for actual work stuff, and that's yep. when I kind of knew that this would this would be something that's kind of achievable in a work environment. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, awesome. But yeah, that's that's me. Sorry, I've talked for a long time. <laughs> I want what, to see what you guys have been doing. What, <laughs> we we were expecting <laughs> nothing less. <laughs> this is the show where we can just sit back and be like, ah, it's the Tyler show. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tyler just show. Let, I don't want that show. Tell some more jokes, Tyler. We'll just sit back and... More jokes? All right, no, 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 no. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you want a joke? Sure. What did the pirate say when he turned 80? What? I made he. <laughs> okay, so that was Tyler and we'll, uh... <laughs> Okay, all right. So we, all right. should we show, um, yeah, let's show some stuff Tim's been doing? and Oh, that I've been doing. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hang on, how do we... How do, how we, do we get out of here? How do we not full screen? Oh, I'm going to press button. Oh, oh, I think... Nope. Yeah. Simon's looking at... Tyler's shared screen and all the buttons that are going on there and then trying to press buttons. Okay. I've, I've, I've already turned it off. <laughs> Let's do this. We're going we're gonna to sort this out. Mm-hmm. So um, have you got... Have Can you see the Twitch stream, Tyler? Can you see what we've, what's going on here? Not yet. I'm going to load it up. Okay. My computer is about to blow up. Is that <laughs> is it the same computer you've had? Dude. Is it the same one forever? Dude, I've had it for six years or something. Yeah. It's Still not going. going well. Anyway. <laughs> Either here or there. Yeah, right. but yeah, continue. I mean, I'm loading it up. So. Yeah, okay. load it up. Yeah. So this is. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, so this is some stuff you've been doing this week? This is the same thing I was doing last week. Yeah. Just drawing little fantasy al- animals. Yep. You probably saw these guys on Instagram, Tyler. Little mice. Oh, yeah. I, yep. I follow you on there, man. Mm-hmm. I, I follow you. You just don't post much. Ah. Yeah. What's Instagram? <laughs> what Simon's like, what are we talking about? <laughs> What's Instagram? Uh, yep. And this is a fox guy. 
Yeah, so this is just the same as what I was doing last week. Yeah, just kind of do. And these away. are like kind of an hour each or something again, or yeah, I try and I I sort of like have in mind like half an hour, and and I try and get it done in half an hour, but often it takes a bit longer or I don't mm-hmm. know just for random reasons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Mm. No, that, 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 one that. hour, one hour. I can't do anything in one hour. Yeah. I spent an hour on Pinterest and I still don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's easy to do. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Cool. So, yeah. what do you what have you been doing, Simon? Well, these were some <clears throat> demos for class. More like, more class demos. Yeah. Yep. So, I think um, this one was the grand total of eight minutes <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the class, but um. <laughs> <laughs> You need more time. You need I to know, I know. schedule yeah, the classes yeah. better. So, well, this one was actually streamed on Twitch. So, right. yeah. so if you guys want to see see that process, you can check it out if you look back in the previous videos. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and this was a demo from the, the class, um, the second class during the week. So, mm-hmm. yeah, obviously a little bit more time spent on this one. But cool. was just showing how to quickly get some textures from photos into the black and white images yep. and just kind of building that process up. So yeah, um, cool. yeah. So there's some things that been checking out during the week. Yep. And, and then, what um, have you been looking at? What, have you, what what's art have you spotted during um, the week? Well, this is oh, this is Tyler Bartley's. Art. You've spotted Tyler <laughs> Bartley's art. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Australia. So yeah. So if any of you guys want to check it out, um, actually, let's let's um, put let's that in the chat. Put this link in the chat, hey, and then we can, and then you guys can check out Tyler's art station. And um, yeah. and and can people add you on Facebook and stuff? Sure. Yeah. So go check out Tyler yeah. on Facebook because you kind of post more of your studies and stuff on there, right? Sometimes. Yeah, I usually post. I haven't for a while, but that if you know, if I'm gonna post stuff somewhere, that's where it goes usually. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for sketches and stuff. Like I won't post that stuff on ArtStation, but mm-hmm. I will definitely on Facebook. So feel free to add me. You know, I'm more than happy to talk as well you know it's funny i no one really used to send me messages or anything then i started a bungee and oh my god <laughs> and it's just like an avalanche not an avalanche a, a few just just so, one a month what's that one a month yeah one a month kind of one a month maybe <laughs> i think it's probably been one a month but i'm you know i always reply and i always try and take some time to you know Mm-hmm. The critique and you know <clears throat> give some guy i don't know yeah it's weird because i don't feel like i'm in position to be given this stuff, but i'm more than happy to help out with anything so yeah sure i had me yeah i'm good with that so these yeah. um no it's all good so one of the things we do each week is just kind of check out some you know kind of like artist inspiration and kind of um just things yeah. that like either myself or tim have been looking at that you know, mm-hmm. we kind of find cool or interesting or, you know, whatever sure. the case, whatever the case may be. So I'm just uh-huh. op- opening some of these up quickly from, from Pinterest. So all these things are, yeah, if you guys, they're posted up in the, on the Pinterest page. So if you want to check them out, you, you can. Um, and yeah, let's have a look here. So yeah, there's some stuff I saw like Nick, is it, I don't know how you say his last name, Nick, Nick G. <laughs> Nick yeah, yeah. So posted up a new little uh, gum road. Mm. Um, so that looks pretty cool. And I know he's teaching over at Brainstorm, so I'm sure he's got lots of really cool information to to talk about while he's um, doing these tutorials. So yeah, definitely something to check out for sure. Especially if you're talking about doing studies and, and yeah, things yeah, like right. that. So yeah, yeah. This is a kind of yeah. I, I think he, uh, he released two right, and I think the other one is like about studies. So mm. <laughs> yeah, so definitely check those out. Um, and have a yep. look and um, this is um, Stephen Messing a Stephen Messing painting so probably like you know a lot of people might not be familiar with Stephen Messing because he's kind of one of those older dudes that doesn't post heaps online um, but he's pretty amazing <laughs> mm-hmm. and works on all the really yeah. big the big movies and stuff and he's kind of like VFX art director right in a lot of a lot of the cases yeah yep. so, I think so he's a, he's a beast yeah yeah, so so check his stuff out, Stephen Messing. Um, I don't know. This is just something I saw that was kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. "Here's some really cool." Like, um, what's really interesting about this is this guy is hair specialist, character artist, 
mm. at, at Star Breeze Studio. So he yep. just does hair, apparently. <laughs> so you can have a job just doing hair. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, but it was kind of cool. It was cool, like seeing how yeah. how detailed and kind of intricate all this stuff is. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Some great hair. Yeah. That is good hair. Yep. It's good hair. It is good hair. Not as good as yours, Tim. Not as good well, as yours. We can. <laughs> We can always learn to. We, we can, can always, we can always better, dream, right? Yeah. I'm I'm trying to do the McBurney, you know. Like I'm really, <laughs> it's not working out for me. And this, um, I thought this was kind of interesting. This is like a a Raph Lacoste, um, painting, but he was saying that he did it on the on the Procreate and the iPad yep, Pro on the iPad. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. You know, definitely. Um, I keep whenever I see this stuff, I'm like, man, I need to just you know do some and you know check it out and give it a go, but I never do. Mm-hmm. Have like, you seen James got... Jean? James Jean doing all his mm-hmm. illustrations on, yep. on yep. with Procreate? Yep. What yeah. the hell, man? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yep. It's a pretty robust so kind of program. Um, yeah. But... Well, I, f- I feel like it, it seems to work a little bit better if you do, because I feel like James Jean has a very well-developed technique that's kind of a bit similar sure. to traditional. And I feel like Procreate is still like it, it, it. You can't clip layers to each other. Like the sort of the process you would use, Tyler, would probably yeah, be yeah. impossible in Procreate simply because I maybe you can now, but certainly last time I checked, you can't I think clip you layers. You can do some of that stuff now. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Sure. I, I remember trying it. And it was it was always like, oh, oh, you can do that now, and then you try it, and it's like, oh, yeah. it's not quite. It doesn't have that robustness where, like, I feel it with Photoshop for for a long time has been this way that. If you can, like, you can sit there thinking, "Hey, maybe I could do that in Photoshop," and then you try it, and it normally works because yeah. everything kind of gels together. Whereas I feel like Procreate is kind of still a bit in the same way, like Coral Painter or whoever known, owns uh, Painter these days yeah. used to be, where it kind of funnels you towards a particular technique. And if you if you jive with that style, then it's like really good. And if you don't, it's kind of like nah, like eh. <laughs> Go away yeah. yeah potentially and yeah. and i feel yeah. like procreate's still a bit like that where if you can find a, a technique that works for you there it's like really really good do you know what i mean the brushes are really good but yeah shout out to ipad <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i just thought that was kind of cool saw that and mm. you know so i'm procreate and i was like yeah hey, that's cool. pretty cool yeah it is yeah. good um this is uh joshua claire who is a traditional painter and, you know, some of this stuff popped up in my Facebook feed. And, uh, yeah, I was just like, you know, this stuff's pretty again, cool. Again, dreaming of, so, again, same conversation. Every time I see this, I think, I really should go and paint with real paints because that looks fun. Yep. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. you stand in the art store and stare and just be like, this is going to make a mess. Like, yeah. This is going to be painful. And, oh, my God. How neat does he... Like, I did, I did oil painting, man, and my palette did not look like that. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So half but, the palette was on my face. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so he's got some pretty cool stuff. So check it, check, um, check that guy out, Joshua Clare. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty awesome. And yeah, just cool. an, another thing I found interesting um, was this kind of popped up in my you know online feed this week as well. It was just some new kind of like terrain generator, landscape generator thing, which um, just looked kind of cool. And I was like, I haven't I haven't checked this out yet, but. Um, but it does look like it could be quite good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and just for any of you guys that are, you know, interested in, you know, kind of making this 3D kind of environments and stuff, there's there's definitely some cool stuff out there that's pretty easy to use these days, which is um, which is definitely like a lot lot cooler than it used to be. Just yeah, it does really seem difficult. like that's that stuff's getting better and better and better and better. Yeah, all all the time. Mm. Back yeah, from crazy. when it when it when it used to be, what some were the pretty awesome clouds and things like that? Yeah. Like yeah. Bryce 3D or something. That's right, Bryce. I was like, what was it? It's like <laughs> Bryce 3D. That's, I'm really, I'm really getting old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's showing your age, son. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. Yeah. But um, no, this this looks pretty cool. So I'm keen to check this out and have a play around with it and see see what it can do. But yeah, we've got all those things on the on the Pinterest inspiration page so yeah we're hoping over the weeks that this really expands and creates a whole nice you know range of content that we can that we can put up so we just need tim to put some stuff up on here now so oh yeah i need to things. yep <laughs> yeah, come on, man. yep yeah come on, yeah Jeez. yeah yeah well i was i mean i was i was going to point out um as something that i've sort of it's not something i was looking at this week but i was talking to students about the fact that 
now you can actually get a lot of um, really good European comics are starting to be translated and put on Comixology. So I think there's a link somewhere we sort of uh, put up in the Trello board um, that you can probably get up and copy into the chat. Um, but yeah, there's actually like, uh, there's, this has been happening little bit by a little bit, but it's starting to get to the point where there's like a nice sort of critical mass of um, artists that have been, and, and really good books that have been translated. And again, some of the European books that maybe people aren't familiar with. So I feel like this is like a, a good artist I really recommend everyone check out, uh, Matthew Bonholm. And um, he has, you know, done a, you know, like a, a range of sort of, you know, different sort of uh, BD. Uh, which is just French comics like Bon Dessiné and he is one of my favorite artists like ever um, I think he's like really really amazing really good composition great character great story um, yeah you know and I think that's one he wrote and drew one of the best ones is if you go back to the to the to the European yeah just go back to just go back one um, yeah and look on the the one on the left on the right yep you click on that one yep and then um you just click on to see what's inside yep so if you look at some of those pages um so yeah i recommend everyone sort of check out comiXology as a way to you know just experience um you know comics these days especially if you do have an ipad pro or one of those big ipads it's it's one of the best i think sort of viewing experiences you can get and there's lots of these lots of these books. I mean, I've I've had this book um, for a long time. You know, since when I was working on my first book. You know, in like 2006. You know, way back in the day, I looked at, I found this, and I was like, oh my god, this is so good. But I never read it. <laughs> but it, but I knew the I knew that the writer was very good. Uh, Fabian Velman is is like a very well regarded writer. And I was like, I reckon this is a good book, but I never read it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and it was like he's he's one of my you know like favorite artists ever. Um, yeah, to the point where I think when I went to uh, like Annecy to like sign at one of the books, um, you know, like a, I think in 2014 at a, at a bookstore, there was like um, I managed to get a copy of like this book, but like the in black and white with like sketches and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like a special edition, yeah, cool. like a sort of a awesome. super, cool. super special edition. Um, but this is like just really good story, really good art. And if you're interested in comics or just composition, um, and you know just how to get all that stuff working i definitely recommend checking these out uh, and there's plenty more I'll, I'll, I'll sort of you know link to some others maybe next week and sort of talk about it but yeah um just yeah. very very sort of stylish because i feel like um it, it's often when we get european comics there they tend to be more of the heavy metal stuff which is kind of you know uh, like erotica or sort of like the sort of more violent stuff that you know <laughs> it kind of goes with the it, it goes with the american sort of market and that fits in because it's, you know people because of heavy metal people sort of associate comics european with sort of that type of genre but there's there's a huge number of different sort of things you can get um over there but they typically don't get translated because there's probably just not the market whereas now sure. yeah digital has allowed that and i think it's pretty good so check that out, uh, Matthew Bonholm. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you do you have any other Tyler that you that you kind of into at the moment that could be good to check out? Me. Yeah. Anything anything I'm into. Any artists. <laughs> any good um, any good artists. I just I just love the classics, man. I, I, like new artists, I'm I'm not too sure. I mean. I just I love I'm like an old school guy at heart, man. I've got Akira at um at my desk at work and the Monster Hunter, you know, concept design book. And mm -hmm. I'm just like flicking through that all day. Mm -hmm. But um cool. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff I kind of like on our station, but there's yeah. I can't, I can't think of anything on the top of my head. Yeah, that's cool. To be honest, but but yeah, it, I'm I'm always on there, you know, having a little flick through. So yeah, this um, I just brought up that Monster yeah. Hunter illustrations too. That's the book you're talking yeah, about, that, right? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. It's crazy. It's yeah. like 400 it's, pages. I think right? it's one of the best design books. Yeah, mm -hmm. like in yeah. terms of character design and, and having like creatures relate to the characters and then the weapons and 
and have a cohesive kind of look. I mean, it's a humongous book as well. It's so big. Yeah. It's, um, it's it's like a design bible pretty much mm. for that whole franchise. It's like an old. It's, it's amazing. Book. It's like a phone yeah. book basically. It's like a phone book. Yeah, you can hit people with it. You know, in the <laughs> office when they. When they when the drawing sucks, you just get the book and you smack them in the head with it and go, "Listen, mate, just monsters." Have, and they have, go, "Oh, okay." Have you so, guys you know. have you guys seen the other ones? Because obviously that's the Monster Hunter two. Is there? There's a yeah, third there's, one, yeah. isn't there? And a first one. There is another one. Yeah. I, I don't have that one. No. It's is, this is, one here, but it's more like illustrations. Right. So oh. yeah, it's also really thick, but it's not the other the one Tyler's talking about is more like lots of design work. Yeah. And uh, yep. let's see, I'm just gonna see if I can bring up some of those some of those pages. Yeah, it's one of those books where you can't go wrong with this because it's there's so much value there. Yeah, it's kind of like a lot of these <laughs> oh, pages kind of things where yeah. you know there's there's heaps of yeah, it's just hundreds of pages of designs like this. Yeah. And we sometimes have and, those at the studio for sale. Yeah, and I mean at at the end of the book is like there's probably like a hundred pages of sketches and like Q and A's with the artists, like how they solve the problems and stuff, which is I haven't seen in any other book, like just real scratchy stuff and the artist is like, Hey, the hardest thing about designing a thing is this, blah 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 and it's like just keeps going on and you're like, wow. <laughs> Yeah. It does keep yeah. going on. It's like <laughs> Yeah, no, that's yeah. really cool. Cool. Awesome. And, and, and well, yeah. if we, if we, so, if we're gonna like talk about some study stuff, do you have any like favorite artists that we can, you know, check out, Tyler? That would be good. I mean, it's it's so broad. It it, it really depends on the person, right? Like, it, it really depends on where their interest lies. Because I know that Tim would study different artists to what I would study mm. or different yep. subject matter. So, I mean, for myself. Um, you know, I actually just I have a list of my my favorite artists um, that I always kind of refer back to and kind of think of as my main influences and and you know if I put all these artists together and like smash them together, I would come out of like like my style would yep. be a, a product of all that and my life experiences. So I mean, Otomo like you know. Katsuhiro Tomo, Katsuhiro Tomo, Suave, or I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, you know, he's one of my favorites ever. Callum Watt is one of my favorites. Um, it depends. I, re I really kind of, I like the Japanese style and how they kind of draw contour lines and stuff. So, I mean, I would mm -hmm. study that because I wanted to specifically get better at line work so i i liked those lines so i would try and break down how they would approach doing lines and i mean yeah the really like ghost in the shell like uh masamuna shiro like uh, all that stuff mm -hmm. that, that's kind of yep well i i guess if and if it, yeah if if we get into the topic of like uh which, which i guess would be just about you know like how how do, how would a student or someone who's kind of studying art yeah. use use studies to get better it it, it really does yeah. seem that like there's different it's not just that like you can maybe strategize how to study better but it's also that we're sort of studying different things right like so you're sort of talking right. about the difference between studying like maybe the design like you know some like shiro like ghost right. in the shell you're actually in that case you're maybe studying like you know how they're putting together technology and like what sort of influences they're using true yeah whereas whereas pete, pete just said why isn't he your favorite artist yeah peter that's because why would peter be my favorite artist he's yeah, asking I... the question he's asking the question yeah oh. but but oh, we nice. peter, peter an artist? I, don't I don't know that name i don't know i don't know what you guys are talking about um, I don't know. Someone's derailing it. Sorry. Someone's derailing it. Yep. Yeah. Um, but but I guess you can also study like painting technique, right? And that's often yeah. something I sort of talk to people about is really just figure out what you're studying, because I think you can maybe yeah. do one study that's about sort of you're, you're studying sort of how did someone you know represent 
various things like cloth or glass or like foliage yeah. with you know like oil paint and you can use that to kind of study maybe how would i get those same effects with you know the brush set that i have in photoshop or you could protect again yeah. like what you're using the studies for in that instance is like it's kind of you have a technique and you want to develop that technique and, and and make it more robust so you kind of throw like sort of challenges at yourself and say well how about metal or how about like fur or how about this yeah for sure yeah 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 so it's like yeah, there's there's different absolutely. there's different sort of um you know like ways that that people can go about it and i think that's probably like that's the, the number one thing to think about is just that it's not just doing studies because i feel like often we talk about the idea of sort of doing a study, you know, like as a master study. Mm -hmm. And I think often the students yeah. do get a bit confused because they're not sure what they should be studying. Like, should I use, the, like, should I paint it? Or people are often like, oh, should I do a drawing first and then sort of paint, yeah. you know what I mean? Or like, what do I do? And I, yeah, yeah, so I think often what I say is like, try and use the same brushes that you would anyway. But, but I do think it's interesting mm -hmm. that like, you know, you could potentially do still life with the sort of the same technique that you use for your work tyler and that might oh, be i would I yeah totally would. yep and and that's not necessarily i guess i would imagine that's not necessarily to get the best still life result but that's to kind of no. just build the process that you're developing to sort of say well you know how do i strengthen it and figure out oh this layer so, on this thing makes apples look better than <laughs> you know than than yeah, this other yeah. thing yeah yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think if, if you looked at my history of doing studies, the, the way I started out doing it is completely different to how I do it now. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, I, you know, it started from I wanted to learn more about painting and I would focus in on how to paint. And, yep. you know, I, if I painted Lady Agnew how many times, you know, everyone's <laughs> done that John Singer Sargent painting. Like I started from that way and as I kind of focused into wanting to actually work and get work my focus shifted from hey how do i paint to hey how do i make it usable in in like like a work process if that makes sense like yep. how do i veer off from just doing a study for study sake and to get better to how can i leverage this yeah to you know get in a get in a job or producing the work that will land me a job yeah i guess no for sure yeah 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 and, and I, th I think that is probably one of the main things that confuses people is that they they go to yeah. reproduce something and that there's so many things you can do you know you can study like a master painting for the drawing of it or for the composition yeah. you know and the result that you would get i mean i always say like it's the, the the result of the study is not that we're creating a nice bit of art it's it's the process exactly. yeah it's the process the things you learn from doing it one hundred percent agree because I see, you know, I mean, we've been around students a lot and I, you know, there is a competitive nature within art schools and I totally understand it. But the thing about doing studies is you sh it could look like shit and that doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it is the process fully and it's about going in and focusing on one, like if I was to paint Lady Agnew, you know, Sargent's mm -hmm. painting, yep. I would approach it with like hey what do i want to learn from this do i want to learn how to say well, what colors work well together for skin tone or you know yep. what brush strokes for hair I'll, you know and i'll just focus in on that i wouldn't worry about making like a really nice painting to impress anyone or you know it, it would be for myself and that's kind of that i mean that's a lesson in itself to try and distance yourself from trying to make what you think is an impressive and good looking piece of art yep. with something that that's actually helpful for you in the end. So yep. yeah, yeah, I agree with you fully. Yeah. Yep. Cause, yeah. Cause, well, well yeah. yeah, I think the purpose of, of doing the study is not necessarily just to have something that's yeah, like kind of pretty and shiny, but to actually just like take something out of it. I think hmm. even though when you're starting out, it's, yeah. it's really hard because you don't really know what you're trying to get out of it. Yeah. So I think exactly. like even doing studies where things are like, you're just doing them to learn how to measure and see and like yep. just be like, yep. oh, the tree should be here, yep. not there yep. because it's there in yep. the in the photo or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, well, well, I mean, yeah. that that's a significant point because I think like even though like Tyler's sort of talking about, you know, doing studies of people reenacting medieval sort of costumes is like there's a significant drawing challenge there 
mm-hmm. right? That like once yeah. you once you are kind of like, well, I just need to draw stuff and maybe, you know, instead of trying to think, oh, what should I draw or whatever, you just kind of be like, throw something at your drawing ability and mm-hmm. say, can I do this? And, yeah. you know, like that sort of builds that muscle. But once you get there, it's kind of people are often like, I think often people keep doing drawing studies. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, I'm keep doing drawing studies. I'm not getting any better. It's like, well, because that's really not going to help you that much to, mm-hmm. to keep doing the same thing. You kind of have to throw different challenges at you, uh, at, at yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I watched a good video um, last week with Todd McFarlane sat down and gave an interview and What was interesting about him was he said that when he was like, I I forget which age, he was a teenager, but he would spend one week and draw the arm for one week. And then the next week he would draw hands for a whole week. And he like, like compartmentalized. Yep. said that right. Like the different parts that he wanted to eventually put together to be able to create his own drawing. So he would spend time like, I'm just going to draw a nose for a week, like just no, like, and yep. that was the way that he kind of studied to be able to then, you know, draw comic books for himself, which I thought was super smart and made sense totally for yep. for, for what he wanted to do, you know, so yep. I thought that was interesting. Well, and I think one of the things is you have to kind of work out with yourself because everyone kind of works differently. You know, it's like everyone's got a different way of thinking, a way of like stuff kind of making sense to them as well. Well, I think, yeah. And and I I think that's always the case, I guess. Um, But I think the key is figuring out like probably like a good commonality between if you look at someone like Todd McFarlane and, you know, someone who's studying to be a concept artist, like all these people who are doing very different things. I think the commonality is that they're able to kind of chunk down the task to something that's kind of manageable because it's like if you're sort of trying to copy like, oh, I'm going to learn anatomy, it's like too big. Mm -hmm. It's not just too big, but it's that the, the, that that unit of like I'm going to study you know like a guy in medieval armor or hands you need something where you can actually produce a result in a time yeah. that's going to make you feel like oh I've kind of something's happened right yeah yeah, yeah. and they, they they talk about that same stuff in video games right where you know people are designing something like World of Warcraft and they talk about you know getting a ding right where you know you get the ding yeah. and you level up and it's got to be level up. yeah it's got to be at a certain distance right you can't go weeks and weeks without a ding otherwise people stop playing the game Mm -hmm. and i think it's the same here i think probably people who naturally get that right have a good sort of feeling in relation to doing studies where they're kind of picking exactly the right type of thing to do and kind of making sure that it's it's sort of good whereas i feel like people who have trouble are those ones who are like right i've never done a study before i'm going to take like a you know a giant (laughs) new york city street yeah and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna replicate it perfectly and and it's just it's sort of it crushes you you know it's not fun Mm. yeah no i think that's a big thing of like just doing studies and starting out is like just keeping things simple Mm -hmm. right just keep things simple and it's like if you can't just draw a little waterfall don't try and draw the whole jungle right yeah like just yeah just start with those little simple things and like (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, we just, <laughs> just see in like. <laughs> yeah, well, like to see in class all the time, right? Where it's just people try to do things that are way too hard. That yep. like say, even you give it to like some, you know, you give it to Jamie Jones or Mullins or something. They're gonna be like, man, this brief is gonna be really, really difficult, and it's gonna take me like yep. a month to paint. And like you're trying to do it in week one or something, you know. Yep. So it's just. Like pick and choose your battles, and, yeah, and that yeah. also Jamie, helps you build Jamie confidence. Jamie Jones is deceptively simple in his paintings. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, if you zoom up on that, you're like, what? And then you zoom out, and you're like, oh shit! <laughs> it's just, oh man, it still blows my mind. <laughs> what the <guy? laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you get to see some sneaky little ones on the work server. Is that? Ah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> More than I. Yeah. yeah so so yeah, i guess I maybe in actual heaven <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so i guess it's just a matter of like again figuring out what you want like what what's the major hole in your technique uh or, or whatever right and i think it's like often i think one of the frustrating things is often the biggest hole is just drawing and so i think you know that's probably one of the first things you should sort of look at is just do it from a drawing sort of black and white sort of simple perspective until you feel like you can you've got a handle on that do you know what Mm -hmm. i mean yeah um which i know it can be frustrating especially for people who are kind of wanting to do more but 
or what I often say to people is like instead of trying to paint the whole Lady Agnew, is just get the head. Do you know what I mean? Just take a crop of the head. Yeah. Yep. And I feel like that often people are like, oh, what I'm just doing the head. I'm not. You know, it's like, and it's you just have to realize it. It doesn't. It doesn't fucking matter what the end result is, right? <gasps> That's right. I said it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. <laughs> doesn't matter what the end result is you have to get rid of that in your mind right because i mean i don't know how, how many how many studies did you put in your for, portfolio when you were applying at, at bungee fucking zero zero yeah <laughs> how many how many I also, people i also didn't apply they offered me all right <laughs> well maybe they did yeah, maybe they zero, did zero like absolutely none yeah and it's probably that you were sort of saying that like you're not putting that on your art station either maybe do you know what i mean like as many of those sort of studies or maybe you know if you pick a few it, it, it's it's not really about the end result right and that's that's so important to understand because some paintings you do are about the end result mm -hmm. you know like and that's it's like doesn't matter how you get there <laughs> just get the end result whereas the study is more about the journey i guess yeah i mean I, it sounds cliche but um when it comes to drawing you really have to like face your fears you know, like I was, I had the hardest time being able to draw lines that I liked or felt comfortable with for like years and years. Mm -hmm. Carla used to call me a paint pusher. He used to say that all my <laughs> designs look like layer cakes. Um, you know, and it took me years, like literal, like six years or something, to be able to draw confidently. Yep. You know. I mean, it's it's a slow burn. It's it, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Absolutely, and mm. it does take time, and it's not easy. But you just have to fucking draw. <laughs> yep. There you go. <gasps> like that's that's the key, right? You just have to bloody draw. Like, I mean, <laughs> you, should, you know, I want to make a sketchbook that looks like James Jean's sketchbooks, but I don't know. It looks like shit. But <laughs> it's just the process of being out. You know, it's repetition, right? Yep. So. I mean, that's definitely part of the repetition, yep. focused repetition. Yeah, so uh, well, do any of you guys have like g some ideas for like recommendations of things to study? Like, well, you know, or... I, I would just say like I was kind of thinking of like, I guess, different different ways to study. And I think it's just important to kind of separate them out. So I think, yeah, like using the same technique that you would use for like, you know, your actual production work, I think is a really good way to do it and but but you have to have that mi mentality right i think the other thing yeah. you can do is you can study like the design or the form or the object so you could say well the object is not necessarily to render the medieval kind of reenactment it's, it's to actually figure out how do i draw armor you know period mm -hmm. right like mm -hmm. how do you actually draw yeah. the thing so you're increasing your visual library that's a completely yeah. different thing because i would say yeah. when you're doing visual library studies it it, it matters even less the process that you go through because often the first few sketches are really just sort of junky and then they sort of get better and better and better and basically as soon as they get half decent you kind of stop because you're like oh i can't kind of figure that out you don't then go back mm -hmm. and kind of do you know what i mean like it's really just yeah. about oh okay i understand that now now i can go on and, and move forward um i think but you could also use it to kind of like um you know study sort of the technique or the style that the person who you're studying uses right and they're completely different things. Mm, you know what yeah, I mean? So yeah, sure. you just have to say, well, what are you doing? And obviously you, you you pick sort of, pick the artist that you want for those different things, right? Mm -hmm. And pick the subject, right? You know, so again, like if you're trying to do painting technique like Tyler was doing, probably photos are a really good way because you're you're learning how to sort of take whatever and put it into, mm -hmm. in, yeah. into your style. Whereas, you know, if you want to study painting technique, like, you, you want to pick an artist who's who's painting this that you like, you mm -hmm. know, and, and that technique that you like, um, you know, and again, if you want to study, you know, form object stuff, you know, it's probably, you're probably better off going to realistic photos, you know, because that's going to be the best way to find, you know, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you want to, you know, study mechs or something like that, just find the, find the artist you like, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, but well, well, what did you used to study, Tim? Like when you were first wanted to draw comic books, and you were like considering this to be like a, something that you'd like to pursue. What were the things that you kind of? Well, I I don't really do draw? I don't really do many studies. 
see i'm i'm the, I'm the black sheep in this conversation because <laughs> the reality is i'm i have so little i'm just like okay. the, the ultimate but, adhd person but maybe but for you were the studies more just copying other artists when you were younger and yeah. stuff no like, i never i never did that stuff is if you other people around I, I tried not to like that's i've always i've always <laughs> been like no i can't be bothered i just want to draw my own stuff i don't i'm like the worst person <laughs> Because I've 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 seen people go through this and I've seen people do it, so I kind of understand. But if 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 anyone's like, and I teach people to do studies because I think it's useful, and when I do them and I do still life in class and I teach people, I notice my painting gets better. And still, I'm just like, oh, I just rather draw. I just want to draw a little rat in a fantasy oh costume, and that's all I want to do. Do you know what I mean? I just can't be. It's like I've got I've got little rats to draw, man. I I don't have time to do studies. <laughs> So that's kind of where I that's kind of where I come from. I do it, and I realize it helps. Um, but yeah. but certainly I you know I, I looked a lot at people's kind of inking styles and and those kind of things. But I, I do it much more by like sort of looking and then you know sort of just drawing whatever I'm drawing. Do you know what I mean? I mm -hmm. just I just keep doing my thing, and then I'm sort of thinking about you know someone else's line work or something like that. Yeah, but I, but I I don't do many studies separate yeah. from other stuff that i'm doing really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is not to say that I, I may get a lot better if i did i don't i don't know i just don't <laughs> i've never had the patience to do much of that so anyway so maybe you could ask the same question of simon and get a better <laughs> answer <laughs> well i mean i i remember when i started working you know my first job in games it, it was the real like dawning you know feeling like i've got to do stuff every day otherwise like i'm gonna get fired right yep. so i just i just felt like i was just like literally i would go home every night and just do like studies yep. in the fear of like getting fired yeah <laughs> but but uh, kind of like when i did it i was like i, I remember i did like a hundred yeah like 150 kind of like in a row mm -hmm. and just did one every day and yep. i was trying to do them on my lunch break and i was even doing them at work and stuff but I found that like it really did help during that period. I f felt like you know my painting got you know tons better. I also think like there's probably a difference between like painting and characters with line and stuff like that. There's a definitely it's like a different thing, mm. you know. And yeah. and I feel like when you if you are trying to get into the environment stuff and things like that, you just like you have to look at photos and you have to sure like see what the colors doing and like just train your eye to see all those shapes and. Yep. you know get even just trying to get using the photos to like <laughs> i remember so uh, so tyler was talking about a guy called carlo before carlo Reliano, who we both had as, as a teacher and i just remember one of the things he was saying about like life drawing is you basically like you're trying to train your your like hand to stop like well your brain to stop lying to your hand right because mm -hmm. it's like you can see the model in front of you and everyone can see what the reality of it yeah. is. But when you draw it, it's not that reality, right? Yeah. So it's like what happens from between here and here yeah. and here, right? Yeah. And and I think like doing the studies is really good at like kind of just training you to see things or just to like to notice stuff, to like get better at like visually measuring things. Which yeah. is which is like a lot decisions. about Yeah, and a lot about, about decision making. Yeah. Yeah. So and making like sure your proportions are right and things like that. Like that's just something you can train and mm. get better at. And you just over time you know, over time you yep. you start having a more mature like decision making process, right? What so what kind of things were you studying? Like what sort of was so it I think studying it was just, photos or studying yeah, just paintings? photos. Yeah, just photos I liked. Yeah. So you just be like, yeah. get a get a cool photo, yeah. get a cool thing that you were, and you just try and replicate that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, using the same sort of processes that you were hoping to work with. Like that's right. So well. I'd be using all the same brushes. So I wasn't yep. concerned about making a look photo real. Sure. It was it was trying to like you know um, just capture the the colors and the how do I know, paint the, a sky? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, just how do yep. I paint a tree? How do I make it look like a tree as quickly yep. as possible? Yeah, using the brushes in Photoshop I have, you know, and yeah, and you know that's you know that can be really really helpful. Yeah, um, totally. No, yeah. I, I mean I think and I think probably one of the reasons why I don't do that sort of stuff and haven't done a lot of it is because a lot of what I'm doing is that you know you saw like the more cartoony stuff I was sort of showing because that's generally what I do. Um, and then you're, what you're looking for there is more like the iconography or the essence of a thing. And it's almost like I don't really need to render it that well. But what yeah. I need to know is like, 
how do you draw armor, right? And then how do you simplify armor? Mm -hmm. And what's what are the five things about yeah. armor that are the most important? And so it's mostly me kind of looking at armor and then trying to draw some sort of cartoony character and then saying, well, that didn't work. And then I sort of tried again. Yeah. And sometimes I would do studies, but but do you know what I mean? They would be so sort of, they would just sort of be like sketch, 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 mm -hmm. sketch, sketch. Oh, I kind of get that now. I'll try and do this. Not yeah. that sort of focus. But it does seem if you want to paint that, that people who are into painting are much more interested in studies mm -hmm. in, in that way. But, well, I just think yeah, you just have to learn what those things are, right? So you can actually... Yeah. Like, so yep. you can paint it or draw it or whatever yep. it is that you're doing. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I think one of the major things that's happening when you do a study of something like a photo is that it, it allows you that, that, that sort of rare thing where you can actually sort of critique yourself almost because like, you know, you can always do a thing and then say, hey, so what do you think of this to, mm -hmm. to someone? And, and mm -hmm. they'll be like, oh, well, whatever. But we don't always have that. And you certainly don't have that, you know, if you just, hey, I did a thing and it took me an hour. Can you like, please, hey, can you give me feedback on this? It's like, no one's got time and you probably don't even have time to talk about it that much. You know, it's like, we don't have time to talk about it. But but when you can sort of say, well, here's the thing I was meaning to copy. Here's my result. You're, you're, I often talk about this is you're actually engaging like your nonverbal sort of subconscious brain and that's much faster and it actually does a bunch of work and you're like you kind of instantly see oh well that's wrong here's probably a bunch of reasons why it's wrong mm -hmm. and then yeah. you know what i mean you get that observational sort of ability to kind of just zoom out a bit and see right yeah no you're not actually drawing what's mm -hmm. in front of you mm -hmm. you know whereas when you're drawing what's in front of you and you're failing you're just probably sitting there like, yeah this is great you know what i mean this is oh this is the best i can do you know um and i think that's why we use that you know yeah that sort of technique because you can critique yourself you mm -hmm. can keep working you can keep getting better and you don't need to kind of constantly be nagging other people to be like what hey hey is this any good because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's like well it doesn't look like the photo so it's not good yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. or whatever you know it doesn't look like metal do you know what i mean like i'm using my technique no i totally I'm using what you this. mean it's yeah, like yeah. it doesn't you can you can see it's like doesn't look like shiny it's, it's like when you're life drawing you, you go around and look at everyone's stuff it's like some stuff looks like the model and some some stuff looks less like the model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and everyone, you know, everyone can all see the model. So it's just training yourself to actually like learn how to see things, I guess, mm -hmm. and, and analyze and then, you know, yeah. then apply it. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and part of it is like, part of doing those studies like that is you're getting visual library as well, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of, yeah, you, you, yeah. you're killing lots of, <laughs> you're yeah. learning lots of stuff at many the same birds time. are dying yeah. yeah 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 so i i know you had a whole a whole um a whole lot tyler where you're doing like ballerinas for a while right and you were yeah you know that was going on for quite some time mm -hmm. did you have any like yeah you know were you just trying to because i know they were kind of like very um they had a really nice sense of mood and and kind of like brushwork to them is that just things you were really trying to focus on at that time yeah i mean I've, I've, I feel like I've had a couple of phases when I, you know, would do studies daily or whatever. I, you know, there's, there's people drinking coffee, there's, uh, you know, ballerinas, but I, I feel that all the, the ballerina ones I kind of did, I, I would, the, 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 the photos that I chose to study were actually ones where they're kind of like backstage, like waiting to go on stage and I felt that they were a lot nicer to me because they just had a, a, a way cooler, more cinematic mood where, you know, there's all this expectation and whatever. They just look visually a lot nicer to me where, you know, there's some rim light coming in from the stage and they're like waiting there. And, yep. um, I wanted to simplify how to paint and how to create mood like like really boil it down to it you know just like literally getting the lasso tool and drawing shapes yeah and then just like no opacity brush and just like brushing hard color in there um, yeah i mean and th that was pretty much it it was just an interesting subject matter i've always been a fan of degas so mm -hmm. i mean when i went to la i went to there was an art gallery close to where i was living and they had so many degas like pastel drawings and um his sculptures and stuff and i always thought they were like they may not have been the most refined but they they captured a kind of feeling and yep 
and 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 so that was kind of the stem of it was you know i you know i love classical painters and stuff and you know i wanted to kind of take the essence of that and translate it over into what i could kind of manage yeah and uh how to simplify painting so i mean the, the picture you've got up right now with the girl is like i mean that's a kind of different stage in my in my studies as well that you know simplifying brush strokes and yeah I, I had just done i just studied like figure oil painting and i wanted to try and translate those techniques over to digital as well and see if they would kind of yeah mix well together so i mean there, there I, I can actually like if i go through it i can i know what i was kind of i know what i was into and what i was trying to achieve with each and yeah. As they went further along, it actually changed to more drawing focus and work focus. Whereas this was more of, I like these artists from the past. How can I like, like, like bring that feeling and and stuff in yep. into my work? And, and how would I tell the same story, kind of thing? So yeah. Um, are, are you using a pretty long winded answer? But yeah. No, no. Yep. It's is are there is there like. Are there techniques? Because I feel like this is one of the things we're often like, you know, when I go through processes, I, you know, I'll be like into some weird sort of thing or, you know, like I'll be doing 3D yeah. or something and then I end up, it's like, I never really use 3D. But then 10 years later, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it comes around, you're like, ah, no, I know how to do that. Yeah. You know, because yeah, I, yeah. I can see, yeah. for instance, that like there is like, there's a lot of stroke economy in the way that you're just kind of like... Yeah your current work where you're using those overlay sort of modes to blend mm -hmm. and stuff. It's like there, there's a lot of efficiency there that a lot of, you yeah. know, people who are starting out might just be like, oh yeah, that looks really simple. But learning how to do that and yeah. just kind of be like, oh, here's like doop, 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 doop. I just put a couple of strokes in there and now it looks really good. I mean, there's probably things that yeah. you are learning while doing these studies that's kind of parlayed into that to a degree. Yeah, I, I think... Um, it, it, it comes down to that, like, if I look at my favorite artists, there's always something about them that seems deceptively simple. Mm -hmm. Like, if I really analyze it, I go, that looks fucking easy, but I know it's not. Yep. You know, I look at a John Singer Sergeant face and I go, that's a one brush stroke and that's half a face. Like, yep. how, how do I, <laughs> how do I, like, harness this and try and, like, use it for evil? So, yep. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like, you know, and it comes down to my teachers as well. Like I, I would say figure drawing with Kevin was probably my biggest influence in that because, you know, if we're learning the Riley method or something, it's really all about like three valley reads. So it's like core shadow, mm -hmm. like, a, 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 you know, and a bounce light and, you know, whatever side is re receiving the light, you know. So yeah. I really try and think about in three simple kind of value scheme when I yep. do it. So I, I just think of course shadow, that, that's pretty much it. Like if, if I'm doing the character design stuff, like all of that stuff is core shadow and then like cast shadow and yep. just remembering that cast shadows are usually hard edge and form shadows are soft. And then that's it. Yep. And that's all I think about. And then I use the appropriate brushes for that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's as simple as I try and go, but Kevin's class really did it for me. Carlo's a big influence on me, and you can tell through his rendering style, which I admired a lot because it looked minimalistic, yet showed me all the materials and, and textures that, you know, are required for game development. So, I mean, yeah, I would say those two were the major teachers like, that influenced me, and I tried to take something from both of those guys, and Yep. reinterpret it to how i kind of approach it so yeah totally yeah 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 and you guys as well you know uh-huh you guys you bloody you, you two guys <laughs> <laughs> and i think yeah. there's there's another guy that you haven't mentioned yet that yeah. maybe has influenced you a little bit yeah yeah like maybe maybe someone called starts with a p <laughs> shut up dude <laughs> <laughs> Pe it's a bad influence. Pete <laughs> says in the chat, Tyler, who is your favorite half Asian, half Australian instructor that taught at CDW Studios? Dungy. Dungy? Pete Young? Yeah. He's all right. Mm -hmm. 
He yeah. hasn't been a big influence on me, though, to be honest. <laughs> Actually, when I look at his work, I go, eh, seen it before, <laughs> random stimpy, crossed with Beavis and Butthead, like, who wants to Who wants to look at that stuff? No one. I mean, come on. Come on now, be serious. <laughs> Um, you need to get some. Do we need to bring it up? I think you need to bring some. So, but but yeah, I mean, I think I think looking at, I I always talk about Sergeant when it comes to studies, and I think did we just go from Pete to Sergeant? Yeah, no. in one sentence. <laughs> yeah, they uh, belong in the same sentence. I'm I'm just <laughs> covering you, googling. Yeah, Don't worry, because <laughs> um, but but like, <laughs> of, often when people come to sort of doing a study of like Sergeant. I think people yeah. go into it thinking like, oh yeah, that's easy. You know what I mean? Blah, blah. And it's, it's when you look at a sergeant face and the face, it's so well lit and painted that it kind of seems flat. But you look at it and you see, oh, that just seems simple. That just seems like nice, smooth. Yeah. And you try and paint it and you realize that there's so many values going on, so much like complexity that, you know, it, it's actually very, very difficult to, to, to replicate that. And that's what most people do is they kind of go into it and it's just, you kind of hit a brick wall because you, you don't realize how much, how, how, how clever it is, you know what I mean? And, and what goes yeah. on behind making something yeah. simple. Yeah, how much thought went into it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, but I think my favorite when doing painting studies wasn't actually Sergeant. For me, I love Sergeant. Like he's like probably the best ever. But for what I wanted from studying was Anders Zorn was like my favorite mm -hmm. painter to look at. And he, to me, felt like, are we really talking about like master paintings and we're looking at Peter Young's? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll, yes, I'll we go, are. I've gotten rid of that quickly. Yeah. We're going Sergeant, to... Peter Young, <laughs> Anders <laughs> Zorn. <laughs> Pick the odd one out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, video. Uh, Anders Zorn was my favorite when when studying stuff. His etchings are still amazing, and he studied those from. He took photos and did etchings from those photos. But mm. the fact that he used four colors in most of his paintings, yep, and could have that type of brush economy, like for me, hands down. If I was to learn to paint figuratively, that's the guy. Like that is the motherfucking guy. Yep. So yeah, his like, stuff so absolutely. just so ridiculous. His, some of it looks like so Photoshop. <laughs> you see yeah. some of his yeah, paintings that, like it just looks like a different. Photoshop painting, right? <laughs> mm. Yep. Well, well, I think there is. I think like students often hear hear people talking about that, like, oh, you know, you've got the limited Zorn palette, and everyone just keeps going on and on. But I think that the yeah. thing is that you know, it's there's something that is very interesting about keeping things so restricted that it does. I, I feel like often again creativity um you know works well under pressure and you know often works well under restriction so it's like restricting yourself in that way is actually something where you know you you you're going to have a better chance of getting down to the essence of a thing you know of like how to paint you know if you do limit yeah. your palette it's like how do you paint how do i make color you know it's not just about sort of you know get the green tube of paint and paint grass and you know exactly. green it, it's kind of like you you're you're actually forcing yourself to think more about you know, relative colors or warm cools or, you know, how to sort of, you know, get a, get vibrance without overwhelming the viewer with, you know, crazy amounts of color. And that's often so much of what we do when we're painting anyway. So it's like, that's why people keep talking about, you know, Zorn or Sargent is as, as people to study yeah. is, whereas I feel it is very easy for students to just be like, who, who cares? Why wouldn't you? It's like, oh, look at this painting, yeah. you know, there's three colors and everyone's like, who cares? I've got Photoshop, you know? Yeah. And and it's because yeah, I'll just color pick it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it's there's something about that about simplicity, um, or something like watercolor where you know again, Sergeant has like you know a lot of you know sort of good watercolors and things, and it's the it's the clar the clarity with which you have to think to do that is so impressive. You know what I mean? Um, Especially watercolor because it's such a difficult like if you have to plan it like. Hardcore. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yes. with watercolor, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's often, and I think it's like, so in, in those instances, what you may be, by people sort of studying something like, because often I tell people is study a sergeant or study, you know, a zone or something and see if you can get the same vibrancy just by playing mm -hmm. with that limited color palette because that's going to yeah. teach you to kind of think like him. Um, which I think is valuable, but but it, that may be valuable regardless of whether you want to end up painting like Sergeant or Zorn anyway. But it, it's sure. yeah, a lot of things, and I think especially this is why 
that has so much to do with concept art. Like I think your work's a good example of that where because they're they're being so minimalist and sort of using so much thinking, that's very similar to what you would do in concept art because you don't have time. Sure. You know, you kind of have to be like, what's what's the what's at the core of like, you know, some guy in a military, you know, sort of suit and how do I yeah. paint it quickly? Because I don't have heaps of time to paint it quickly, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and I, I think it also comes down to, I think regardless if you're going to do stylized work or whatever you want to do, I think even studying these guys, even if it isn't your jam, is like such a valuable thing to do. I mean, this stuff, like you may not, oh, I don't want to paint a, a copy and oil painting, but I guarantee you the things you learn from doing that will translate over to anything you do art-wise and how you see things yep. related to art from here on. So I, th I think regardless of what you're going to do in art, I would always recommend co you know, copying a sergeant or Zorn or Soroya or go on a figure drawing. Even if you want to draw a pen, like you want to be an industrial designer, go to figure drawing and draw. Like it, It's like this tradition that works. They're called masters for a reason let's study them and you will, you know, it's, it's only a good thing for you. I, th I feel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then you can, then you can have intellectual conversations like us about like <laughs> dead artists all the time. And, like, <laughs> sit on our soapboxes and go, oh, Sergeant is the best. No, Zorn's the best. Even me who doesn't do studies of Sergeant or Zorn. I feel just I I am the biggest poser here. It's kind of embarrassing, but but no I no but you just have a different way of approaching it. No, but but I I am I'm listening and I'm like I should do more of these. I'll I'll endeavor to do more because I I think it is it yeah, is. Yeah, oh, man, you're too busy. To I'm too, I well no I I have I have been too busy, <laughs> but but I every yeah. time I've done it I've noticed it improves my painting. That's the thing like. And I think we, we've got we've got all my studies from sort of teaching and doing demos of this because I have a basic understanding of how to do it. But it, it's, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know people who are really, really into it. Um, yeah. And it's, I've always found that I've gotten lots out of it. Do you know what I mean? It, it's just that because yeah. I just don't have that impetus to do it. But yeah, it is one of those things where like, you know, I, I feel like I should do more of it and it would benefit. Yeah. For sure. Well, I feel like it's kind of like that story, your, your little Mullen story you've got, right? Where you kind of asked him for how I can improve and do all this and yeah. stuff. And basically his response was like, you should just paint cubes. Paint cubes. And I was and like, yeah. You yeah, were yeah, like, yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, Craig Mullins. I'm not going to do that. And then what are some... It's, yeah. Isn't it funny now? 15 years changed, later. Right? And Tim like, is now oh. teaching people, people how to paint cubes. cubes. Yeah, that's embarrassing. <laughs> But you know, and, and and we've spoken about this in the past. You feel like that has really improved, mm. you know, just fundamentally, you know, how you paint and draw yeah. and think about things. You know, like, totally. Yeah, because because so if I ever need to do that stuff, I have a, I have an understanding of how it works. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So if I can kind of add it, I can I can add a little bit of it in, um, to doing what I'm doing. And yeah, I found it. It's made a huge. It has mm. made a huge difference. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just I find it funny that yeah, I'm still I'm not the sort of one who's staying up late at night. Mm -hmm. do it doing studies of that of that of that sort of yeah. stuff but but i definitely yeah. have it's made a huge difference yeah yeah no very very cool all right yeah so cool yeah thanks thanks tyler for some for some insights um yeah and, and i mean just before i go are there any questions oh <laughs> i think we've just lost tyler so oh, oh. oh no. he's Am back he's back you're Am back you're what back. did you just say? Basically, you just said the last thing. Um... Uh, are there any questions besides which yeah. which game are you working on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, are there any questions in the chat about, you know, uh, Bungie, the art, like concept teams, you know, kind of uh, portfolios, what, what people kind of look for? Because we've just like, I guess we've just recently hired a, a few people and, you know, I kind of feel like a understand a little bit better the process of how it kind of goes and i mean yep well can, can you like? can you maybe talk because I, I feel like probably a lot of people on the stream are you know people can ask sort of questions and stuff like that but i feel like a lot of people probably are still people who are listening from sort of adelaide or or you know australia or something like that is there any sort of things that you know you've sort of found from you know sort of doing that thing where you you know finally get a job like sort of in america 
and you know is, is it is it all you've yeah. kind of dreamed it to be <laughs> well i would still like to be honest working at bungie is fucking awesome like no <laughs> book shit like i'm not even joking you know i i think our team like if we're talking art wise like our concept team is so fucking good mm-hmm like I constantly feel like I'm gonna get fired. Every day. <laughs> I'll say you like my comment before then. <laughs> yeah, about doing the studies. I, I'm looking over my shoulder. Like, I feel like any day someone's gonna tap me on the shoulder and go, "What the fuck are you doing? How did you get in here? Like, what is this?" But I mean, Bungie's a, like a super great company to work for, and I mean, I'm not just saying that. I'm, Oh, the, it's. I feel like they're one of the few studios that kind of value art more than other ones. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to talk shit on any other studios, but I feel like for myself, when I wanted to join a studio, it was going to be for the team and not for necessarily the project. Of course, the project's important, but, I, you know, the day-to-day working with people is way more important to me. So yep. um, they really give you, like, quite a lot of time to figure stuff out like they, they they really put an emphasis on the art and designing stuff so i've i've never really felt kind of rushed or pressured and pressured to do it any one way right it, it's funny i guess our team is about nine people now right the, the concept team and everyone is so different in how they approach stuff some people just model you know, um, some people draw on paper and scan it in, Yeah. you know, and then we've worked with Dorje who just like, holy crap, <laughs> he does like so much, diff- like so many different things. He's like a Swiss army knife. It's incredible. <laughs> like it, it's, I, th- I feel like we're all pretty different in how we approach stuff. So all our stuff looks kind of like it's all cohesive, but it, it, you can see like people's different influences and, their process mm. and it's really it's really inspiring and really cool place to work and you know people are just stoked on stuff all the time they love artwork it's i mean i i feel like it's gone really smooth to be honest uh, you know i do sit in a in a studio with 700 people sitting around me so <laughs> it can get kind of noisy a little bit but yeah um, there's lots of food and drinks in the studio so that's good <laughs> And uh, yeah, they give you lots of t-shirts and stuff. So I mean, that's nice too. Yeah, well, well, I guess I guess it is a thing where like often um, because we talk about like different options that people have to go freelance or work at small studios or big studios, and I feel like yeah, often one of the things that people are scared about working at a large studio is is it going to be this impersonal thing where you're just a cog in a giant machine? But it does sound like from stuff that I've heard that a lot of these high end studios are spending a lot of time and r&d on like hr stuff you know so that people are do feel like they're creatively and, and that sounds like that's the case dude i feel like the, like a hundred percent like i mean before i came here I, I was like i was pretty nervous man i was scared like am i am i not going to be able to produce stuff on time like mm-hmm. uh, you know this is a big studio that you know what are the pressures on me and stuff sure. and dude i like it's been so like I don't want to say easy because that's kind of a weird word for it, but I, I kind of just slotted in there and things have just been, you know, I've been challenged at work for sure. I, you know, I stay, I stay back pretty late mm-hmm. most nights, but I've never felt, you know, I'm joking when I say I'm going to get fired or whatever, but I'm not really, but, I am. <laughs> but it, the, the, there is like such a strong culture there. I feel of, like I said before, I keep uh, repeating myself that they really value the art, you know, mm-hmm. And you, you can tell from the art books throughout, like the first Halo to Destiny, like there's a big emphasis on doing paintings, doing drawings, like, and I feel that, I feel that with the character team as well, the 3D guys who are like, and girls who are like really fucking awesome. And the hard surface guys, like they're all artists in their own right. And we can talk on like, it's, it's just nice, like familiar terms and, mm-hmm. you know, it, it just seems like it's a really cool working, but like it's really cool. Yeah. You know, 
for such a big studio, they've got that, like you said, that uh, kind of smaller family studio kind of feel. Uh, they do a really good job of making you feel welcome and yep. not pressured, but, you know, we've got a thing to do, so let's do it. And you feel like the direction is pretty clear. And, yep. And, and there's no pressure to do anything any one way. I think that was the biggest thing for me was they're just like, hey, man, however you want to do this, just do it. Like, if you want to draw it, you can draw it if you want. If you want to model it, you can model it. Do whatever you want. Yeah. And I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. Freak yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because we've, we've yeah. I mean, we've got it. We've got cool. a We've got a question in the chat that's kind of like, you know, how often do the concept artists there, you know, combine 3D with 2D? And I guess people are off. I feel like people are so fixated on, do I need to learn 3D? Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? Um, you know, like, I, I feel like there is this sort of focus on like a giant sort of over, like overseeing eye that's kind of, this is how much, this is yeah, how this yeah, stuff yeah. should be done. Um, but yeah, it sounds like that's not the case there. And Well, I've, you know, I've got to give credit to like the higher ups in the art department as well, like, like my the lead like our concept lead joseph cross is like awesome and he's super like he's just like hey man just however you want to do it just as long as it looks cool mm -hmm. then, like you know, sure everyone's an artist but, and, and you know and everyone knows that you know everyone's different and it, it doesn't matter how you get there just as long as it's usable and it hits the brief that you can do it and well i mean i'm talking specifically bungee like you can do it like anyway and it, and it's totally fine um you know and i was a bit nervous about doing like kind of line drawings and some of them were a bit loose and stuff and then i go over to the modelers and they're like like kicking ass and i'm like oh shit like what the fuck <laughs> how did you interpret my line as like whatever mm -hmm. and they're just like no worries, dude. I got you. And you're like, Shit. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and the art directors. There's a few art directors, and you know, they're all super good, and they're all like, it seems like everyone's on the same page. Mm. Which, which is, I think that's a way to sum it up. Everyone's on the same page art wise, like and process wise. Yep. I wouldn't worry about learn like pressuring yourself to learn 3D. I mean, it's nice to know. Yep. Um, well, you 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 did learn 3D. Like you you, like you, you you know how to do ZBrush. You know what I mean. You can do that if if you were required to do. Yeah. But it's just because you prefer to do it in a certain way. That's kind of how you're able to do it. Yeah, and and you know I mean, it, it's just been it's been a really big learning experience. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say other than that. The team's are awesome. Um, I, I like going to work every day. There's lots of snacks, like I said. <laughs> like, I mean, a lot of snacks. Like, ridiculous <laughs> amounts of snacks. Um, yeah, it's cool. Like, I, I don't know I don't know what to say. Like, everyone on the team's super nice. Mm -hmm. um, really helpful. Um, yeah. I was apprehensive before going. I was a bit scared, but... Well, so so uh, one of the things I, one of the things I'd like to ask is probably because we've got quite a number of students, you know, watching the stream and stuff, is like, yeah. how, what what was your process of getting over to the states, you know, to get the job and yeah. stuff, you know? Like my my journey to get there. <laughs> a little like, bit, yeah, like sure. Work wise. <laughs> yeah, well, just like in terms of like, um, you know, maybe some of the key things that led to that, and then even sort of. I think a lot of students are always like, how do I get a visa? Like, how does that happen? Oh, you know, okay. did did, yeah. did Bungie just kind of do it all for you? Or like what, you know, yeah. Well, I think there's always like a magical thing that people think happens. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, I feel like I'm pretty well versed on this because <laughs> I was like stressed out for like... I mean, I know the answers months. to all these questions, right? <laughs> but how, yeah, about, you right, so, <laughs> how yeah, about you explain so, it? So basically what, what happened is... um So... They, they contacted me and they wanted, you know, I, I was living in Denmark with my girlfriend, shout out to my girlfriend, um, <laughs> and I was uh, freelancing, you know, on Star Citizen, and that was a super good gig, and I really enjoyed that. And, you know, Bungie contacted me. They seemed interested. They flew me to Seattle um, for an interview. They flew me there for five days and put me in a nice hotel, which is 
across the road from the studio and you know uh, mm-hmm. i interviewed with them uh it was a long day there was lots of interviews <laughs> but it was it was fine um and then they made me an official offer after i went back to denmark i accepted um and then they provide you with uh immigration lawyer to uh help with the process um basically to to put the story short if i didn't have a degree i wouldn't be working at bungie mm-hmm. i mean i i didn't like going to uni I, I, you know, I didn't particularly like my class, my course, which is probably why, <laughs> but I'm thankful that I did it because I literally said to the lawyer, if I didn't have a degree, what would be plan B? And he goes, there's no plan B. And I was <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah. So, um, it doesn't apply usually for people in the U S if you're going to work in the U S it doesn't matter. A portfolio is good enough. Mm-hmm. Um, but for us international people, and if we want to work in the States and get a work visa, just to be able to get through the red tape, uh, like a degree is like a, a, a must for us, unfortunately. It shouldn't be like that, but it is. Yep. Um, so my process was, you know, the, the lawyer provided me with so many documents and like verifying my education and stuff. I had a big packet with me. Yep. I went to the, the Australian embassy in Copenhagen and uh I was approved straight away and then um, you know I thought Bungie is such a great company I mean they put you up for a month they like they help you find an apartment and stuff and I mean I could I you know it, it sounds cliche and it, it, it sounds like I'm licking their boots or whatever but <laughs> you know they made it so easy that you know I you know I, I was stressed out about like Starting working here, but everything else, like the logistics, was taken care of, and mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I mean, it just it seemed like really smooth. Like I don't, I don't know what to say other than that. Like I think if you're at CDW, and I think that's great, and to see it through all the way to the end, I think that's like the perfect kind of yeah. um, course. I would, if I was a student now, I would go and do this course and then work my way over to the States. I think that's like the way you could do it. Or you could freelance at home. It depends on you. But Mm -hmm. um, that was my kind of course. Um, Did did it matter whether you got a three-year or four-year course or anything like that? Or was it just any? Yes. So So, so we've got a couple of questions. Like some people are saying, is the higher the, the degree easier to getting into U.S.? Um, do you need just a bachelor's or need a master's or honors or like, is it, you know, cause I, I yes. from what you were saying, it's kind of like the duration. Like if you've got four years, it's kind of easier yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So basically the bachelor courses in the States are four years. So they assume that, uh, everyone else's bachelor degrees are four years. Right. Um, which isn't true because. They actually do less units than us a semester, I believe. Right. So we actually do the same amount, but we do it in a quicker amount of time. Sure. But something with anyway. So what happened with me was I had a three year course. They technically they want a four year bachelor degree. So for every year that you have to make up, you need four years of experience. Sure. Verified by your employers. Um, yep. so if you didn't have a degree, technically you would need like something like 12 to 16 years of experience, which sure. sounds absolutely fucking crazy. Yep. <laughs> there's other, there's other loopholes, which are like, if you're a special talent or something that yep. if you've been in magazines and if you've been on TV or something, you know, if you, you've had this whole list of stuff where you're an actual kind of personality, yep. then there, that's another kind of way. But the E3 visa for Australians for work in the States is by far the easiest, like without a doubt, the easiest visa to get. And if you had a, you had a four year degree, it's like, but I mean, it's weird because they say you need a four year degree. And I would say I would agree with that to relieve some stress on you. But I've, I've 
read so many stories of people with just three years going to the embassy and then the people were like not even looking at their application and just sure going, do you have a degree and they go yep and then they just stamp it yeah like, sure well i, I guess peace of mind I, yeah yeah i mean i guess the thing is there's like you know if you're like a first year student or someone who's kind of you know thinking about this now is you don't actually know what the rules will be in four years anyway so like True, it, it, it change. yeah it, it does seem like it's probably going to get harder not easier with the current like political yeah. climate um but yeah. but yeah sort of if, if you have a you know a degree if you've studied if you're a learned person then it that's, yeah. that's what you I need mean, i mean for the course i did it wasn't really applicable but i'm glad i have it mm. because I, I would there's no way i would have been working here it would have been yeah. almost impossible I, yep. I feel so yep. um, yeah and you know, it's I kind of Oh, I mean, the other thing I was just going to talk about is like, again, people often are sort of asking about, you know, how do you get a job here or whatever? And it's just, I I just find it, it's just amusing that again, Bungie kind of came to you. um, And it just seems like that's often sort of how it happens. I think people are so concerned about that. And it's kind of, it always does just seem that like, you know, often you don't sort of pick these things, you know what I mean? You don't pick the time, you know, like you, you weren't sort of saying, I'm going to move to Denmark so that someone in America can come and headhunt me. Yeah, no, it was totally unplanned. And I, I, I wanted to make a point of this, and I forgot to say it earlier, but everyone in the studio who works with art, whether it's the modelers or the concept designers, whoever, everyone looks at ArtStation every single day Every day, everyone looks like, <laughs> I look yeah. like I see like, <laughs> like a HR person and they're on art station. Like everyone looks at it. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, I see people scrolling through things more than clicking on things and going, oh, that looks nice. So, I mean, what I'm trying to say is the stuff that we all gravitate towards in the studio is stuff that's different. Mm-hmm. It's stuff that's kind of unique. Yeah. You know, that's like personal to yourself. Um, you know, there's so much stuff on there that it's, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say. Hey, man, be more unique. But I think if you've got a different kind of point of view and you kind of infuse that and have different ideas in your stuff, that's more compelling. Sure. And we talk about it a lot in the studio. What actually, you know, who would fit in the team? Who who has interesting ideas? Yeah. Um, and different points of view. And I think that's the most important part. Also, how, how do you work with others and yeah. does this person fit in production? But usually it's like, is this person creating like different ideas that are inspiring? And yeah. Well, I, I mean, dude, like I've, like I've looked through some folders at work. There's Tim McBurney stuff in there, <laughs> like inspiration. <laughs> like I'm not shitting you. Like, you know? It's fucking Tim McBurney. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, yep. unique point of view and like trying to, to think of stuff a bit different, I think is the most eye catching stuff for yeah. us at the studio. And if I kind of like retroactively look, then maybe I had something that those guys saw that was maybe a bit different, or yep. I looked at things a bit a different way that they could use in. You know but that could become useful in uh, production so yeah so so it was the case that like you know that people at bungie were kind of like they knew who you were before you came to work there do you know what i mean like to a certain degree yeah, or like key, true, key yeah. people in hr or like art director and who were making those calls were kind of like oh yeah i i've seen that guy's stuff on art station or something like that yeah so basically <clears throat> I, I think the i haven't confirmed this but the way it kind of went for me was I mean, I con- I got contacted by HR, but I had gone to school with the guy on the team, and um, you know, I had a relation. You know, I I knew that guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he recommended me or not, but um, my name came up, and people were familiar with my work. Sure. Um, yeah. And that was just from me posting, right, an art station. That's yep. pretty much having visibility, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people get jobs through their friends all the time, like recommendations, like especially here. You'd be surprised in Seattle, like how many game companies are so, like we've got Valve like right behind us at work 
and then there's sucker punch and epic is down the road and there's a, a riot studio and like mm-hmm. microsoft is down like three for three is the next whatever you yep. know like and and people and you know arena nets down the road so i mean people kind of move between these studios all the time and yep once you know kind of one person and you're not a dickhead to them <laughs> I, I feel like that's a pretty good start <laughs> yeah 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 well, like uh, you know yeah a lot of people yeah. you know are getting jobs that way right where you're just recommended by a yeah. friend or and that's why i think like building the community here at a school or wherever it is you're going is so important right and to you know because you they're the people that are going to go on and yeah. do things, and yeah. you know, if you're friends with them and you're or <clears throat> yeah. nice to them or whatever, it's a, it's it's eventually it creates those yeah. networks well, for. I think know, for again, so, something that maybe yeah. sort of it, it's it's something that I think everyone's aware of, but maybe not to, to the degree to which it's important. Is that it's not like the companies are these large amorphous kind of things. It's like they're full of people, yeah. and yeah. the the key thing that you're worried about, like if you're thinking there's someone new is coming on the team, is like. Do you, you know, do you think you'd be able to get on with them? And that seems a bit like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's about the art. And it's like, no, it's it's probably a huge amount of it is just, is it a fit? And that's what HR people get paid to do is like, you know, are you going to fit with the yeah. team? And and I feel like people sort of un- like they, they hear it and they listen, but it's like, that's a huge part of it is like how it interviews. Mm-hmm. Do you seem like a cool person? Are you going to be weird and freaky and, and crazy? You know, we talked yeah. about this about what to put in your portfolio is like, that's a huge part of it, you know, so... A lot of the time, yeah, everyone's looking at Art Station. Everyone's doing that. Mm-hmm. It's sort of, Everyone. yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, and, and the interview process really kind of, you know. Yeah what what was the interview of, process like? Was it it was long? Like it was a full day sort it of was thing. A whole day. Yep. Yeah. So so it's not like you go in there for like ten minutes and you have to kind of like like go on on. It's kind of it's more like a marathon where. <laughs> Like kind of yeah. try and get you um, tired and drunk and then see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I spoke with people. You were like you were saying like even your lunch break was. I uh... would kind of be working with, and. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you were saying that even your kind of lunch break was like an interview process. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, it was supposed to be, but it was just kind of a cool lunch. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but yeah, man, you have to work with these people every day. So yeah, I mean, it's it makes sense. The so, art is one part of it. Doing your job is another part, and then being able to get along with people is like another part. And we yeah, had so. our one last question: was um, what sure. was what was the question that was hardest to answer in the interviews? Oh, dude! Oh, did did they <laughs> did they ask questions? Was it like question, 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 or was yeah. it just kind of? It depends on the person. <laughs> <laughs> There was like eight different interviews in the day, like eight or nine, like different people. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, oh, I, the actual hardest thing, maybe it wasn't a question, but it was more having to talk about, like, I feel kind of weird trying to sell my work to people. Like, sure. Because I kind of feel if you're not sold on my me or my work, like, I don't <laughs> want to talk about it. <laughs> like, so maybe just being able to communicate your work to people and your ideas behind stuff and what you want to achieve. Maybe that was the hardest part for me. It probably wasn't any one question. It was more right. trying to convince them that I was appropriate for the <laughs> job. It's like yep. like how my work can kind of I don't think I was at, I don't think I was stumped at all by any questions. There were, there were some toughies but yep. I guess there was one that was like what makes the perfect design i think that was i think that was one but i'm pretty sure that was like catch me off guard and making me talk about stuff but yeah generally they were all right it's just me trying to like you feel like you're repeating yourself to different people throughout the day and that that was probably the toughest part i think yep yeah sure but yeah it, everyone's super nice like really nice extremely nice yeah um, so it, it was good. It was it was great, you know. I like it here a lot. Yep, that's right awesome. There. I'm I'm glad to <laughs> hear. I like, I like Adelaide too. Adelaide's all right. <laughs> like a lot. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's cool. All right, so um, I think we're just gonna have like a little break. Um, I don't know if Tyler's gonna come back, but maybe we'll uh, we'll talk to him in the <laughs> break. <laughs> Tyler's gonna be. And um, yeah, it's pretty late there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll be back in a few minutes and we'll um do some critiques. Yeah. Okay? Cool. Thanks, right. guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks.
All right, guys, so we're back after a little short break. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just getting a coffee and uh, a quick little bite to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a few uh, critiques here for this week. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to quickly sort of roll into those and, and go over, um, you know, some, some feedback for these pieces. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so this is a, this is a piece from uh, Michelle. Mm-hmm. And um, let me just bring up... Um, bring up the question yeah just the, just the question yeah yep um sorry i think i would have had this already sorted out mm-hmm. <laughs> um michelle just says it's a work in progress piece that's getting pretty muddy because mm-hmm. i'm not sure how to resolve the lighting um there are two light sources a green light um, from the box yeah and a yellow orange light from the surrounding candles i'm mm. unsure how how far <clears throat> the green light would reach be- below the source slash how much of the character to leave in shadow. I've also attempted right. to find references for the silk sash around the dragon's waist, but I'm aware that it doesn't sit right and would appreciate help help with that too, along with any other suggestions. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah, so just looking at, I, I think, um, yeah, while Tim just kind of like gets things set up and, and going to do a little, you know, draw over here, um, I think that... Um, one of the things that's happening a bit, Michelle, is kind of just uh, there's there's not like uh, lots of I guess sort of like hierarchy or structure to the painting and the colors and stuff. So everything's just getting a little bit kind of crazy, I guess. Overall, mm-hmm. um, I think you need to decide like what you want the focus to be. Like I think the the stuff coming out of the box. I actually thought it was <coughs> wings. Um, until I read that, <laughs> right? Like I thought it was some sort of pattern, like peacock kind of feathering stuff. Sure. But then, obviously, reading that comment and looking at the image a bit closely, I can see. So I think you need to work <clears> out whether you know the the character is the main focus or the effect that's coming out of the box. Because at the moment, the effect is kind of overpowering the whole image, I guess. Yep. And if there was that much green light coming out of that box, it would be green light bonanza everywhere. Yeah. You yeah. Know? <clears throat> um, well. I think there's also the question of is like yeah how realistic are you trying to paint it right mm-hmm. like that that's a fundamental thing that that probably needs to be decided there's because there's some bits in there that are a little bit more realistic and there's some bits that are really stylized is that yeah yep. so it's sort of i feel like probably one of the problems that may be sort of happening when we sort of come to this is that there is a graphicness to like the image and like there's no background to the image for instance it's kind of more like a vignette Mm -hmm. um and the things coming out of the box are sort of graphic in nature there are these kind of candles that are floating and they're kind of graphic right so i think that that there's always this sort of thing of like well is it going to be realistic is it graphic? How much does the lighting being realistic matter? Yeah. And I would yep. say as soon as you're going sort of graphic like this, it's, well, not much, yep. right? Uh, what you're mostly looking at in terms of create, like the reason that you would make the lighting realistic is to increase the readability, right? Mm-hmm. So insofar as lighting being accurate helps you to read the form or to read the image, to read, you know, the difference between the lighting on the face and the lighting on, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> elsewhere, <clears throat> really the only reason you want to do that is is to kind of make it clear and you know i think for instance like you know a, a really good example of someone who kind of mixes these things because the the danger with critiquing this is is saying oh either make it realistic or, Just, yeah, or graphic and yeah. i think no there's plenty of examples of people who mix it up but <clears throat> i'd say just doing that and figuring out how to do that is is a job in and of itself so i'd say you know a really good example of someone to look at um as sort of reference would be uh you know like james jean talking about um you know james jean doing some yeah, stuff yeah. on the, the on procreate um <clears throat> so just as an example of someone who does mix you know as someone who can kind of render quite realistically mm-hmm. campaigning oils if he wants um but also frequently has these like really really graphic sort of elements mixed in with everything you know mm-hmm. and so I, I think like just looking at how that's happening is probably worthwhile well even but, in some of these he kind of like paints the form but then also has areas that are kind of like flat at the same yeah, time right like actually still flat. gets it to work yeah yeah 
But one other thing you'll notice is that there's not much realistic lighting mm-hmm. on the character. Like, for instance, here or here. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's rendering, but there's not a solid light source, right? There's not, like, you know, there is, but 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 I think what you'll find is if you look at it, a lot of it is very much uh, sort of, you know, it, it's delving into the subjective. And I think that's what I'd say one of the main reasons that you you would sort of study the foundations and do studies and try and paint realistic is that it gives you so much more freedom to say, hey, you know what? I can paint this realistically. Mm-hmm. I can shade this, but this would look better if it was graphic, you know? And you can actually just start mixing it up and get really cool results. I think like James Jean is, is a really good example of that. Um you know where yeah you have this mix of these different things happening uh and you know james gene is one of my you know all-time favorite artists and also if you're interested in process i think he's one of the you know one of the you know first people to you know really really start to you know considering how popular he 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 is Mm -hmm. um i think it's sort of um, really interesting how much he shares his process you know Mm -hmm. he's frequently has books that have you know how to's and those sort of things so if you want to sort of see what's going on with that um, there's lots of resources about you know how he paints and the process with which he paints and stuff like that. But yep. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's really a matter of saying <clears throat> how much rendering do you put in, and I think that's one of the things that's happening here. So, for instance, a candle light is not really going to be a very strong light. Um, typically, what you'll find is you know if you look at sort of a candle lit sort of environment that there's not going to be a huge amount of directionality to it. Mm-hmm. It's more sort of an ambient sort of light source. Yep. Uh, there's a bit of a glow. <clears throat> yeah, thing. there's sort of like an ambient glow. It's not really strong enough to kind of... Uh, and it's not the kind of really strong light, you know, like is a torch sort of shining in your face. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't really worry about the candle sort of illuminating anything. And I think one of the things here is we kind of have... There's a black ground... So there's not going to be any bounce light from the ground um, or anything like that that we can sort of talk about. But a lot of these um, sort of feathers and and things under here are kind of quite bright. And I think one of the primary things when we're rendering or doing anything, and the reason that mixing up styles can be complicated is is that if you do something in one part of your painting that adheres to a particular law or order or structure, you kind of then to a certain degree have to do it everywhere Mm -hmm. where that same thing was happening. So I think one of the things that's most successful about James Fiend painting is that where he's painting it flat, it's really flat. Yeah. You know, where he's painting it sort of realistic, it's it's sort of really, Mm -hmm. he's very much in control and saying, this is this thing, that's that thing. Yeah. And not getting confused and not sort of saying, oh, you know, maybe Maybe I should do this or maybe I should render it. So I think one of the things that's happening is maybe you're saying I should render this or I should render that and whether or not you should render it is basically based on whether it's going to look good Mm -hmm. because you're you're well past the point of ignoring any actual reality or physics based stuff so I'd probably say you need to rethink the image from a graphical standpoint i.e. what's light what's dark um, and really think about where your focus is going to be yeah where your primary sort of read is going to be um, and just how many colors you're going to have in there because again, we've got purple, green, orange. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of color going on there. Yeah, kind of all the colors of the spectrum. <laughs> just yeah, about. yeah. And, yeah. you know, that's not necessarily a, a simple color scheme. But you have a very complicated image. So it's a matter of figuring out what to do. <laughs> so so the, the, yeah, the, so the, like, the critique you know, is like... you're pausing because it's like... You're like, there's a number of different ways you could push mm-hmm. it, right? It's just where you want to go with it, Michelle, yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, one of the primary ways that I often solve image problems is via color, right? So I'll kind of like mess around with so the color steam stuff. What you'll find is if you, again, make this more monotone, it's going to start to, you know, come together a lot more. If you actually add color, but, you know, we sort of make it monotone, like, you know, I make it all green mm-hmm. or make it all red. Or, you know, what can we do? Make it all sort of like, right? <clears throat> if we make it more like here's two colors, even though it's more complicated, it actually becomes easier for us to read because there's nothing distracting, right? We're kind of actually, you're actually torn to the, the, the graphical black and white nature of the image a bit more, which mm-hmm. I feel like isn't going to be more pleasant to look at. 
I'm no longer drawn to these red feathers or anything like that yep. because now everything's red. Mm -hmm. uh, in a similar way, you know, if we kind of make it all, you know, sort of green, right? And we could either make it all sort of like blue well, or, cool. <laughs> or green. <laughs> yeah. So what's happening here is we have a sort of a, you know, a blue green sort of harmonious sort of like yellow so we're getting some sort of color vibration right well, i think also when you do that into the blues the orange like pops straight yes. away and so you're like oh and pops. it's right near the head and they're kind of like oh that's good exactly <laughs> yeah like, and yeah, so you're finding like, like that yeah. you're finding a natural thing where we've now got like red green kind of like um sorry i'm sucking on a lozenge because otherwise my throat because i've been teaching all day <laughs> otherwise my throat goes so um, it's kind of like a split complementary color palette if you yeah. want to get technical about those <clears throat> yeah <things. laughs> you've sort of got like red and, and blue which is a very strong contrast so it's mm -hmm. like being like bam that's yep. like jumping off the page and we've got sort of green and, and, and blue which is sort of harmonious um, and then you know obviously green and so there's lots of nice things happening here right and we still have a bit of this orange but it's kind of more sublimated mm -hmm. it's more again orange is going to be next to some of those other colors yeah. right yeah so what's happening here is that we're making a complex image have a simple color palette mm -hmm. and then we're just getting an easier image to read um which is maybe what you want to do but that's how i would sort of start to say well you could do this on this image mm -hmm. if you wanted it to be more psychedelic and sort of colorful i think what you need to do is need to forget lighting because once you start lighting you know if you sort of think about well <clears throat> Well, I feel like maybe even some of this like form to an extent in the legs and things, right? Where if you're going to go with like it being sort of a more abstract, iconic piece, you could actually flatten a lot of things out. Yeah, you totally. Know, just lose the kind of um, sort of like the form or perspective mm -hmm. on the legs and at all and just have no twist and have it straight and kind of make yep. it more yeah. that well, type of thing. Yeah, I mean, we could certainly sort of sublimate, you know, the, the, the orange or, the, or that sort of color. Because again, it's it's. But the other thing is that well, you could make that. One of the reasons the legs aren't really reading that much because they're purple. Mm -hmm. So we could either make like the background behind them a bit lighter so that you get a value bump on that silhouette, mm -hmm. or again, you can kind of just sort of not really care about it because if you make everything the same color, it's sort of you know we're just going to look up the top anyway. So it's it's just a matter of sort of realizing what's happening, um, and I think maybe one of the things that happens is that when we're sort of, you know, trying to figure some of this stuff out, there can be a lot of shoulds. Like I should add lighting. I mm -hmm. should add rendering. Like I need to do this, like, you know, because then it'll be realistic or it'll look better. And that there's less rules once you kind of, you know, we're talking about painting like Sergeant or yep. Zorn. I think that's more where you can sort of start to say, here's what you should do. You know, you're thinking about value and, mm -hmm. you know, doing the cube rendering and stuff. Whereas, again, I think James Sheen is a good example where there's no real rules, <laughs> right? You just have to make it look cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, he's like the master of, like, doing stuff where it's, like, the image is kind of completely broken. Yes. But it still looks awesome. Total right? just, just chaos. Like, everyone, you know, goes, like, wow, James, like, you talk to the best concept artists, they're like, James Sheen, you talk to the, you know, really... You know, like visual artists, and they'll be like, you know, yeah, everyone likes everyone it. Everyone likes them, right? Just so on an abstract level, yeah, they're very pleasing to look at. Which yeah. is also another quote that I remember Craig Mullins saying. There's so many Craig Mullins quotes I have that are just like I feel like just reading them on a forum when I was like 20 years old, and they just kind of went like a bullet just directly into my brain, <laughs> right? And and it's well, he's, um, kind of, he's kind of okay. Yeah, yeah, but also I feel like he's <laughs> very he's actually very good at explaining things yeah. in a in a bit of a Zen master sort of way. Um, but he kind of said, like, you know, you should be able to turn the painting upside down and it should still look good, mm -hmm. right? So from an abstract perspective, the painting should, should you know, we should aspire to create stuff that even if has something going on there, mm -hmm. like, no, no, that's just a painting of flowers yeah. with light on them. It's mm -hmm. realistic. Is that we should also say from an abstract point of view, you should just be able to turn it upside down, mm -hmm. right? Because just what's going on there is, is valuable. So that's something I always sort of take to heart. Um, and I think that's something that's playing into the James Jean thing is that just you look at it and it's almost, yeah, if you took, I mean, he this he might be like, don't turn it upside down. You ruin it. You know what I mean? That's like designed to be that way. But it's it's so visually appealing just on a pure like eye brain. Yeah, yeah. Shapes. <laughs> and on, on like and, a monkey yep. level, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very mm -hmm. primal thing. 
So yeah, if we sublimate some of this, right, it's going to sort of disappear a bit. I would say, yeah, play around with sort of, uh, it's the sort of thing where you probably need the layers and the things so you can kind of push and pull those things. Make sure, you know, that you're getting just a good read between the background and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the sort of subject. But I would say, you know, again, if you wanted to put graphically, just put some, you know, some of this sort of red as, you know, the flame, right? You know, and again, make it sort of graphic. And the reason I'm pushing it towards graphic as I say, as opposed to saying this is how you'd make it more realistic is I think it's it's already so far along the graphic road, um, partly because it's in line, but also mm -hmm. because of just everything that I think that you're going to get a much more appealing image. Um, yeah, rather than try to render everything with form and stuff, it's just going to get more and more confusing. I think if you're going to render something in form, you you need to kind of think about how the light and the dark rendering is actually going to affect your final composition mm -hmm. i.e if i add all the rendering where do my things end up being light or dark and yeah. you need to plan that from the start otherwise mm -hmm. you kind of end up rendering about well there would be candles here and this thing here yeah. and you render it and it's yeah. like oh that's what that looks like yeah so you, we don't want to do that we want to have a plan for how mm -hmm. that's going to look like and that's one of the primary reasons we do thumbnails you know is to mm -hmm sort that stuff out so that's probably what i'd say i'd say there's many different ways you can sort of solve this but i wouldn't worry about candles casting too much light because this is going to be you know yeah. if, if you did want to just to roughly talk about the lighting what i'd say is i'd say yeah you, you're essentially gonna you know a, a good way to do this is just get in a dark room with a mirror get your laptop <laughs> open up your laptop and see what happens, you know, mm -hmm. and you basically just see your face and nothing else, you know, is <laughs> there's just no light is going to be underneath. Um, so yeah, it's basically just gonna, you know, sort of make this yeah, there's greener. There's going to be green everywhere. <laughs> there's going to be green here, um, and less green everywhere else. And you know, that's sort of what's going to happen. But <clears throat> again, what you'll find is one of the real problems with dealing with rendering line art is the more you kind of move towards realism, the more you kind of have to move everything towards realism. Mm. So I'd say it's kind of, it's one of those real things where also to a point at some point, you're going to run into the fact that things don't have lines around them in the real world. Yeah. And that's the, that's the bump stop you hit when you're, when you're doing comic book art is real stuff doesn't have lines around yeah. it. Yeah. So you're already in a, in an abstract kind of sense anyway. And the more you render it, at some point, it's kind of like mm -hmm. there's a conflict there. So that's yeah. what I'd say. I'd say probably if, if you wanted to kind of um, do a quick fix, I'd think about making the color scheme mm -hmm. much simpler. And again, there's there's lots of different ways you could do it. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, another way would be, <clears throat> you know, if maybe if we did some, some trickier stuff. Uh, again, let's make it all, make it all red. I uh, probably need to do something different if we make it. What's it, what's a good way? I think I think red. Well, even just color balance. Red on a hard light layer often works. Uh, and then you just shift the values down somewhere. So that's looking. For some reason that looks really nasty. <laughs> Maybe just adjust the opacity of it or something. Yeah, I think you would need to you need to put the values at fifty. It needs to be like that, but that's moving it really dark. That's weird. Anyway, if we made it more, because it's not supposed to. If hard lights on fifty, is this in a different? It's weird. Anyway, now let's try and color adjust, right? So say we make it all like red in, in whatever way, shape or form we, we sort of can, right? As red as possible, um, you know, but then we could maybe sort of, you know, make you know, just these blue or something like that. You know, if, if you wanted to create like a real sort of dramatic, drastic um, 
sort of color shift. <laughs> Just wait for Photoshop to catch up. So essentially what we could do is we can like when Photoshop catches up is we can sort of select just these. Or what we could do is we can maybe try and go selective color. Let's select color range. Let's select the green. Now let's do this and let's Do something like that, <clears throat> you know, so we could kind of, you know, get them to be a very distinct sort of different color. You know, there's lots of things you could kind of play around with if you wanted it to look like, like really, I guess what I'm saying is like, you know, you don't have to make it all one color, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you're like, I'm just adjusting it and turning it into one color, but that's... Yeah, like, that's like, that's a that's, cheat, right? Yeah. That's kind of like a bit lame. It's like, well, could you, <laughs> you know, that's not what I wanted to do, you know, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, that again, there's lots of sort of ways we could potentially, um, you know, just just affect these, right? You know, it could do some, you know, weird sort of color mm -hmm. stuff. You know, you can play around. It doesn't all have to be sort of monotone or, you know, or, or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, uh, that's well, kind of cool. <laughs> I hope, I hope that... 70s psychedelic. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that helps, Michelle. Um just give you some ideas of maybe where you can kind of take it and things like that. And even just like having a look at the James Dean stuff could be a really good way mm -hmm. to just, you know, kind of like think about how you could, you know, push the style and things like that. Um, yep. So, yeah, awesome. Okay, let's let's move on to the next one. Yes. Um, we've got, um, well, let's do this one next. Where we've got uh, Emma mm -hmm. um, who has posted this um, this uh, image that is from Matt Painting Class. Mm -hmm. um, or shot design, shot design class, mm -hmm. um, and there is a. We're gonna. There is a little YouTube link here. Oh yeah. Of the of the shot because it moves. Moving. Wow. Yeah. So. Can we cool. Just, let's see if is that gonna. There we go. That's a bit clearer. Oh, so it's awesome, right? Yep. <laughs> That looks great. So firstly, it looks great, <laughs> Emma. It's yep. just like moving yourself. No, it's cool. Really cool, yeah. So um, I think Emma was kind of saying that she um, just wanted some help with how to get the lanterns um, to feel big or mu more realistic. Um, should I add small fires for people matching um, like in the original? So there's kind of like an original that these guys are working off. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, that was painted by Cody, who's one of the people that that work here, and, yep. and does some uh, does some paintings for the shot design class guys for the students to work on. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just saying like it's sort of the scale doesn't quite feel right and things like that. The so, scale of the lanterns. Yeah. Well, I yeah. feel like that may be a fundamental issue because the bigger you make the lanterns, the smaller the mountain gets. Yeah. So I th I think that's just my comment, Emma. Is basically like the the lanterns feel gigantic against the size of the mountains hmm. you know and it's it's that's one of the things when you're creating like kind of environments and things like that and even just you know characters and whatnot is that um you know all, scale, all scale is, is relative yeah, yeah so scale is something that can really um kind of like <clears throat> mess up the you know the painting and and then you're like you're trying to solve all these other things but really what you needed to solve was just making things look smaller or bigger mm. um yeah and no matter how much rendering you put into it or whatever it's sort of yeah. like it won't fix that fundamental error of yeah like something is either too big or too small yeah yep. so if you think about this stuff emma how is big that, is a how big is a a light gold a light bulb yeah so how big is this lantern compared to these mountains right yeah and if we think of a person in the scale to this mountain here it's like a person is literally like a, a dot Mm -hmm. you know on this mountain and probably even smaller than that dot mm -hmm. i've drawn you know but let's say a dot let's say a for, dot. <laughs> so that means the yeah. how so. many pixels is that is that <laughs> so dot? it's like you know i think two that, pixels. <laughs> i think the dot is two pixels so yeah. if you're working large you know maybe your dot was like 10 pixels it still means probably if you're painting a lantern even like a big one you know um 
yeah then then it's going to be tricky and so i think like like i think emma was sort of saying well it's fantasy <laughs> and so it's like magic like they're giant lanterns but i think the the key is you actually have to put scale in to indicate that they're giant lanterns because the thing that naturally happens is that we're probably more likely without more scale indicators to actually shrink the mountain in our mind right and it's very tricky how this works i mean we were talking i was talking about this not to go on a rat hole but I was, okay. I was talking about um uh because we're doing material spheres where you basically have to take a sphere and render it as a realistic material and it's funny how much the brain locks onto certain iconic cues and just won't let go Mm -hmm. right and one of them is you know if you're trying to do like a shiny ball if you kind of put a shiny dot <laughs> right like the specular highlight on a ball and we had some sort of people who were putting the and to make something sort of re reflective you kind of need to combine mirror reflection right on top of like a matte surface to kind of give you that feeling of it being mm -hmm. like a reflective sort of gloss and you could if you put that shiny dot on the ball and then you can basically misrender the reflection of the table any which way and your brain i it's feel like almost your brain recalibrates and says well that must be a table that's shaped like this yeah, yeah. reflecting yeah. right and then yeah. there's another one and there's like three balls with like because people were playing around with like how do you do the reflection mm -hmm. and each one was different and i'm like it's funny that each of those balls is definitely a shiny ball mm -hmm. and the problem is the table yeah right yeah. and it's because your brain is doing pattern recognition on these things all the time and it's like it's just like a bulldog it's just yeah, like yeah. chunk yeah i've got that yeah. reflection this is definitely a shiny ball mm -hmm. if it's not a shiny ball something's very very wrong with my reality <laughs> and the thing that can change is the shape of the table mm -hmm. and so your brain just kind of goes well it's obviously shiny ball and it's just reflecting a weird table mm -hmm. yeah yeah no it's and and it's yeah. the same here is yeah. like to a certain degree your brain is just going to be that's a small mountain right mm -hmm. because which one of those things is least likely to happen that's right. that's right and you know it can be like you know the like the, the the purple or white dress or the blue or white dress thing where like you can might be able to be like oh, now it's a big mountain yeah now it's a you know thing but there's going to be one of those things where you either have to decide do i make the mountain look bigger somehow mm -hmm. so that people are like oh they must be giant lands yep. or yeah i don't know do you what what else can no, you no, do? No, that's right. So the the thing that is doing that, Emma, is that you have all these like little mountain shapes that are going on here, right? Mm -hmm. And all of these things are actually giving scale. Yep. So there's little tiny bits of rock in here and things like that. Yep. And so our brain is converting that's all a that big to mountain. the size of a person, right? And it's going like, a person is this. Now, yeah. actually the thing that's throwing this off, Emma, that is actually not the lantern. <laughs> it's the fact that there's a rope going between the two mountains. Right. Now, how do we actually get a rope here that's tied on here somehow, right? And the, the person's casting it out. How do they throw it to this side? And then yeah. how is that? It like, do you get what I'm saying? So there's, it's there's a, big, a whole bunch of things. There's right? nothing to support it. There's yeah. no like giant, like engineering. Because that that would be, you know, you, you're looking at something again. If they were giant lands, you're looking at something that's kind of you know the size of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, mm -hmm. or you know, like a giant engineering structure. Um, and you know, you're going to need some stuff <laughs> yeah so some some braces and stuff like so that. emma's already asking in the chat like so what do i replace it with right, right. she's like How okay, do I, I've got, like, okay I've got shut up got shut later. up like, tim <laughs> shut up i, I get, get it the, uh, the lands are too big up. Okay. shut up so what i would do emma <laughs> you're a bad person yeah what I'm, i would I'm do sorry emma, emma is just make these things <laughs> like maybe you could have some little glowy bits you know in the rocks and things like for example yeah. there's a little pathway where there's lanterns kind of leading up to that now having said that is you could then push around like kind of the story, right? Where you kind of like... You could have a pathway leading exactly, to... Exactly, right? You, are you going to paint a door on this you know, thing? A pathway. Is there going to be a pathway to a door somewhere? <laughs> yeah, a pathway <laughs> leading to the focal point, right? Which is what you kind of want to do. So, you um, and, and then if you start thinking about this even more, Emma, you could have like you could get your camera move so that it goes to that, you know, it, it goes to that sure. you know, focal yeah. point. And the other thing I'd say with this was, you know, like a little bit like Michelle's, right, kind of before, is that if you do have all this light here, it's going to be spilling out everywhere, right? It's mm -hmm. going to be, this is really intense. So one thing I'd do, Emma, is maybe like tone all this down. You know, you could just really tone that down and play with like how subtle you can make it before it kind of breaks. So let's, don't know if we can do this quickly with whatever brush we've got here, but let's give this a go. Is this, I'm just going to select, you know, one of the colors that's on here and just 
you know, kind of tone all this down, right? And, you know, it, it's still going to look like light is coming out of this thing, but it's mm-hmm. just going to be like way less intense. And then you can have less, like, kind of, um, less kind of crazy glowy stuff going around. But even then, you probably need to, like, you know, uh, like light, you know, the size of some of these, like, yep. pieces here and things, and like up here and stuff, there's going to be. You know, yep. it's going to be getting all that kind of reflected light and things like that as yep. well. And you can totally, you could totally, yeah, pull that stuff off, Emma, right? And and like I said, you know, and and this is a case where the more lighting, the better, because you've got photo elements in there. You're yeah. kind of on that yeah. track. Yeah. And graphics. So it's like you have to do those things. Yeah, yeah. You have to do those things. Otherwise, it yeah. just looks a bit fake. So yeah. Um. So that's what I say, Emma. Is like with your bits you're adding in is just be really subtle with those because the scale of this thing is like gigantic right Mm -hmm. and if you if you don't keep the scale gigantic then you're kind of like losing the power of the painting because the power of it is it's this crazy big thing and when you Mm -hmm. see it moving it's like whoa it's awesome right so you want to keep that grandiose kind of scale going on so you know right so that it's the whole thing of like uh um you know this shape here <laughs> is just a box, right? It's a box. There's no other way to describe that box mm-hmm. until you put this box, mm-hmm. right? And now, now all of a sudden, a this box. is a big box yeah. and this is a little box, right? So that's that's the scale. So you just need to keep that in mind. So you want these mountains to be big so the elements that you put next to them need to be small, mm-hmm. right? And that's going to create that that sense of scale. Yeah. Otherwise, you're starting to twist it around. I, I, always, which... I always feel when we talk about this stuff that it feels like it feels very base, like when we talk about this, it's like, really, really, <laughs> you know, you've got to put shy, like spiky things on the bad guy to make it look spiky. And <laughs> do I really have to? Because it's like, no, this is still a box. They're all boxes. You know, uh-huh. we're like, really, what is a box? You know, that's you're labeling things, but it's you like, know, it's the sphere but thing, right? That's how your brain just, works. Brain it's unfortunately, it's like, yeah, we do this and it's subconscious. Mm-hmm. It's like you can't not see it. You know, once you yep. start seeing a thing, it's yep. like your brain. And I, that, I mean, the, the blue and white dress thing that happened is mm-hmm. like a really good example of that where like as soon as your brain grabs it that thing the other one it can't it's <laughs> like oh you know yeah. um you don't have a choice you know you can't sit there and be like mm-hmm. well actually i'd like to see it this way um a lot of these ha- things happen instantaneously subconsciously yeah and part a lot of what we do is actually just try and convince someone that they're sitting in front of this painting seeing a giant mountain or seeing this your job is to do that and often a lot of it is like talking about subtlety is about being as subtle as you can in suggesting and making those things happen. You know what I mean? So, you know, something that's not as subtle is like maybe you could put like a person in the foreground and then put a smaller person mm-hmm. in the middle ground and then a smaller person there. And it's like, you know, that's really on the nose. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, if you do it in the right way or you're maybe a little bit more subtle about it, um, you know, that that might sort of, you know, help or, or be a way to, to do some stuff. Um, you know, for instance, I think, you know, if on like back on that sort of mountain, you know, sort of back there, if you painted a little, you know, hut or, you know, some sort of architecture or something mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. that might be a way to kind of say, no, 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 these are giant lanterns. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And you put smaller lights around the place, um, you know, that might get you there. Um, but yeah, it's it's always a battle to kind of mm-hmm. convince. And I think that the, the thing is to, to point out is like as soon as you, as soon as you kind of make that thing click you can actually sort of then get away with with murder in other scenarios mm-hmm. like like if we put like a, a human sized figure next to something it's kind of your brain instantly goes oh that's big yeah. you know there's yep. nothing it's like little people don't exist in the world mm-hmm. we know this it is a fact yeah <laughs> there's no little people so if you well, put is little people but <laughs> we just think everyone's six foot tall not, right? not, our not brain this, likes to think they're six not, foot tall not this big right <laughs> so if you just get a picture of a person and a picture of a fish and you know even if it's a small fish and you mm. make it big we're immediately going to be like you yeah, know you're like what's going on it's a giant right? fish you know yeah, because yeah. we we know that people aren't small mm-hmm. but maybe there's big fish <laughs> you know it's it's just your brain has a hierarchy of things that it believes and it's doing that all the yeah, time yeah. so yeah if you do that, you can then sort of paint crazy big mountains that are preposterous, but people will be like, "Wow, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. cool." So yeah, I think I think it's really cool, Emma. I think um, it's looking good. I just think yeah, tone down some of those things, okay, 
and maybe try just adding in those smaller, really smaller bits of mm-hmm. scale. And that way you can push a bit more kind of story into there. With, yeah. with and that stuff. you could have smaller lights maybe next to the big lanterns. Mm-hmm. You could have some sort of structure yep. that's like holding it up, some sort yep. of suspension bridge. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, or like sort kind of, of stuff. Yeah, like sort of scaffolding and things. That and it could be, be super cool. small, super suggested. Not, yeah. yeah, yeah, some stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, let's do... Um, okay, so last critique, guys. All right, let's do, let's do this last one. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is Ethan, who uh, yeah did some stuff last week, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, obviously you know trying to apply some of those notes you, you yep. gave him to him. So um, I might just set this up again, and you can yep. have a bit of a go. But um, yeah, what are your thoughts on this one now, Tim? Yep. I think there's definitely some things that are like cooler. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. I think like the the shoes and things are kind of like yeah. Um, I think there's I maybe think a few it, little shapes. It feels things, more but... consistent. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. No, definitely. Um, and um, what are some? I think the arms kind of cool, right? Like I, I feel like that thing's a bit kind of too crazy. I, but... I think I think that it it feels a bit sort of unwieldy. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because it's sort of like yep. like balance wise. Yep. I also think it's you, one of those you did things. Tell him to make it huge. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, he made it huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a matter of sort of. Um... What more do you want from Ethan? Tim? <laughs> well, I I think it's a matter of like um I think now it sort of has the right level of energy. I think so too, right? It's it's kind of like it feels like it has, you know, a lot more potential now, right? Like it feels like it's on the right track, and now we can just massage those things into, yep, you know, working really well. Someone has messed around with this computer. <laughs> there is who uses this computer? No, no so it's, it's are like you the serious? Yeah, yeah. Does this does it this computer literally been, sit here? It has. Not I don't believe you. Someone is coming in here. Yeah. And secretly painting on it, I think and we'll be able to find out who by the yeah. weird stuff they do to Someone Photoshop. Someone just likes messing around. With time. It's like a student that comes <laughs> just in here come in here and is like, like, delete, delete, delete. <laughs> get get rid of all that stuff. So let's do edit, fill. Uh, oh, content aware. No, we want foreground color. No. Maybe because it wasn't selected. Oh, maybe it's maybe it maybe it's selecting a thing. There we go. Cool. Maybe that was just me. But someone is definitely coming in here and, <laughs> and changing actions ghost, and things. The ghost of the Twitch stream. Studio. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that one one of the things, and I think this is one of the, the the things where like the more thumbnails and stuff you do to prepare, the better. Because one of the things you'll probably find is that there's going to be certain angles where the design is sort of cl- as clear as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd probably like try and if we're sort of going to do this, I'd probably try and angle it so that you know we can actually sort of see that design a little bit better because i think it's a case of like you know that's not the most optimum way to kind of like you know present it um but i think the rendering is is sort of pretty cool um yeah and i think so one of the things i'd sort of say is probably design wise we'd sort of put um we'd sort of put these things over here right to balance the big kind of arm so you've sort of got Cool, yeah. You yeah. Know, from from a design mm-hmm. perspective, right? Right, we sort of got big arm on this side, and you kind of want to sort of balance it with something else. Um, again, that's a terrible drawing. <laughs> but yeah, so just think about think about that right like we us wanting to sort of balance it you want to turn that around a bit. oh yeah i'll turn that around <laughs> okay. the drawing on the side it's it's the simple things it is like the hardest thing to do is like drawing on drawing on an, an angle. angle right it's like your brain doesn't compute what yeah. line is going where yeah so you know we sort of got we've got the arm we've got the sort of the thing coming out here um you know i i would i would tend to say that um like this is really good because it's sort of it's repeating the shapes it's kind of like mm-hmm. three it makes it seem very sort of um purposeful mm-hmm. and i would say that the more you could do that here i think like having this design be sort of three you know sort of smaller canisters or something like that would would be a bit better um just because i feel like it would sort of give us some sort of repetition and i just feel like otherwise you know what I mean? These things are like a little bit sort of unwieldy. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like probably it would run into some issues with sort of like animation and 
you know, just sort bang of, into stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah breaking um, rigs and whatnot. Yeah. So I think it's just a matter of like getting that, um, getting that sort of shape breakup sort of working. Um, which you know I, I think is sort of happening, but it I so think actually I noticed one thing that you're doing here, which is I know you're just doing it quick, but it feels like you're just drawing it a bit more front on to kind yep. of like, and I'm guessing you're just doing that out of habit of just trying to show the design a bit more clearly. Yeah. Like one of the things I've, I find the students tend to like have sort of do a bit too much is like, you actually don't need some crazy pose to show the design. It actually kind of like hides a lot of the design. Yeah. And actually doing something like a bit simpler is kind of. Yeah. Well, uh, especially because clearer. I mean, what you'll find is now like. ethan has gone and done all this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think this is the thing is like, that's, you know that that's why it's sort of giving giving the feedback um that there's you know it's it's not necessarily that you need to go and fix it you know yeah. what i mean it's, yeah, it's yeah. just like these are sort of things to kind of think about um but certainly you know we could easily sort of you know just as easily kind of redraw this arm make this one sort of big you know yeah less so, handed so i guess like one of the things is are you kind of saying that you should just be doing a bit more of this like thumbnailing sort of stage to get the idea clearer before you move on to like a full-on rendering is that yeah, like, I well, I I definitely think like the more, and I'm not sure whether he's done that or not. You know, what I mean, he he may have been doing some of that, um, you know, as well. But I'm just sort of thinking like what I'm trying to do is sort of think about balance, right? So just from a two dimensional graphic standpoint, mm -hmm. before we get into this, because I feel like one of the things that's happening is yeah, like you've got a lot of weight on this side, mm -hmm. and that kind of even though it's 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 even though like now that it's kind of extreme right you kind of notice those things more sure so it's more about sort of like balance of design sort of going crazy um so i sort of just think about basic design principles like repetition you know rule of three is always like a good place to start just kind of see what you know happens there um you know and, and sort of start there but i'm just sort of saying well we kind of have this big weight here so I think you kind of do need something over here, right? We maybe, and you know, maybe they wouldn't be as long because they need to kind of stick in here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we sort of got some of these sort of stuck, you know, around here. Again, just to zoom up so you can kind of see this very low res <laughs> sort of drawing. But yeah, so I'd sort of start to think about the fact that we want the big arm on the right, maybe something on the, on the left to kind of balance it. Um, whereas this seems like it's very sort of heavy on, on, on that side. Um, yeah, and I'd say one of the other things is like she's getting a little bit sort of thick around the middle because there's like sort of some big sort of cool, and I think this is sort of interesting and like mm -hmm. sort of you know interesting sure, sort of design sure. stuff. But just be careful that yeah, we sort of keep her still looking sort of you know a little bit feminine with with just that kind of line, um, and a lot of that is just going to be it's sort of like waste. Um, because again, I think it's like. And a lot of people can sort of say, well, you know, you don't always have to draw women that way or whatever. I, I mean, even people in Overwatch got sort of in trouble for, <laughs> for sort of making like over-sexualizing a, a lot of things. But even you still look at it what it is now and it's basically everyone's kind of shiny and fake and, you know, the, 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 like sort of super athletic and super fit. And I, and I feel like if you're not going to go in that direction, you know what I mean? Like there's a certain like sort of fun idealized shininess to, to mm -hmm. the whole thing. Sure. So I think it's sort of important to do that. The other thing is it's 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 a nice sort of design aesthetic, right? Is like, you know, and a lot of like the natural kind of athletic figure has a lot of design aesthetic in it. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've yeah. kind of got... It's know, just long and sleek and the shapes. Yeah, well, we've got like those just contrast, are, you know, are, just like yeah, big to yeah. small to yeah. big, do you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. To big to small, you know, you've got those same proportions, right? As people talk about the, mm. you know, there being you know, you've got your sort of Fibonacci spirals and your sort of golden ratios and that the human figure kind of has that. And mm -hmm. it is that sort of big to small, yep. do you know what I mean? Like kind of proportional stuff. So that that's something I'd sort of do as I'd say um, just a little bit. I feel like some of that is sort of getting lost in the redesign. And so I think it's maybe just important to kind of just restate and, and re sort of connect with um, just, you know, like, is it, it, are all these things happening? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Um, so, you know, I'd say like, yeah, you could probably have some cool sort of shapes or something like that, but I make sure it's like a real sort of crop top thing. So you can get, you know, some difference between, you know, like the, the anatomy sort of underneath and like, you know, maybe a big sort of chunky belt or something. The belt looks a bit like it's sort of sagging, which again, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I feel like it looks like it's sagging and therefore 
it is. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to yep. design it and be, oh, there's a cool belt because it goes down or well, whatever. It's got this different angle. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, and also one of the things is that one of the primary reasons you have belts <laughs> in ca- so, in designs hold on. is to show the, 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 the you know, the, the volume and, and, you know, the roundness of, of certain things, you know. So it's like one of the primary, you know, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, people often, you know, we sort of have... Yeah, there we go. Um, you know, that's one of the often the reasons why we kind of have stripes around things is because mm-hmm. it helps us to to describe right how the form's going. Whereas if everything's kind of just flat, then you can't. So one of the reasons that we'd have a belt is so we can describe where the form is, where the anatomy is. So I just make sure that that is kind of you know happening. Um, and again, this is where you start to chase the drawing around because now we've got the hand is mm-hmm. in the way mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of the thing. And this is mm-hmm. where like, yeah, um, <laughs> it's probably like, ah, uh, no, <laughs> mm-hmm. screw you. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to do that, you know, cause that's <laughs> going to do that. So that's why I think it is, it's just really important to kind of have these things kind of sorted from the, from the very, you know, first is that you would pose your new character design a little bit more a little bit differently than you you would your old one right Right, right. and i think the old one was actually a really good pose Mm -hmm. right and that's like good like so you kind of got it right and then you change it and then you kind of chase around yeah yeah um so often i'd say is that you may actually find it's quicker and easier to just not start again but maybe go back to the lines redo the lines with the freedom to say no no i can make the right choice here yeah yeah and then sort of say, well, does any of the coloring or rendering I did actually fit those lines? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, this bit does. Yeah. Keep that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because otherwise you, you, it's very easy to kind of get um, trapped by the design you've done and the sort of the changes you make. And I feel like a little bit of that's happening. Like maybe this went here because it was like, oh, you know, if I put it there, mm-hmm. you know, that that's going to happen. So, sure. yeah, that's, that's what I'd sort of think about, right, is, um, you know, and again, thinking about different types of materials, like, you know, a lot of these are kind of thick, whereas these pants seem to be sort of like a bit ripply. You know, I'd probably, you know, think about just making them because, um, you know, a lot of the time games, we want not to have too many wrinkles because they don't animate well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah well, it's just more <laughs> you know, stuff. And it's, like, and it's yeah. more kind of like streamlined. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be sort of more athletic. It's going to sort of, um, you know, contrast with some of the other things a little bit more. So I'd, I'd think more about that as like, you know, maybe um you know you could have some sort of we'll have a you know i think like looking at like references like even you know like horse riding pants or something like that yep. where you can yeah it's yeah, like could, they're, they're not like a design a shape like a or something tight um yeah like a workout kind of lycra style stuff which like yeah. you might not want to have but they're they might be a fabric that's you know still kind of like quite tight but just you know has some yep. wrinkles in it yeah you know also the other thing that's cool is like you know the kind of like uh, seam lines and stuff because yep. once again they kind of show that the yep. form that's going on totally. and things like that yeah 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 so just like try, trying to show as much form whereas i think these kind of hide form mm-hmm. uh to a certain degree and yeah it's it's i i think it's just a matter of sort of keeping things a bit cleaner because that does seem to be the aesthetic right um but yeah and you know you could have some sort of crinkles or something like that but again sort of just make them sort of more iconic minimal yeah right because i think the other thing is that there's like a lot of this high frequency detail here Mm -hmm. that really isn't seen anywhere else you know what i mean it's not like like this cloth is sort of different so even though you want different textures to a certain degree Mm -hmm. we kind of want to keep the same sort of level of shape design i.e you know no wrinkle in this design is going to be like this (laughs) but if you're painting something hyper real you know, for, you know, one of those sort of, I don't know, realistic, you know, like new games, mm-hmm. um, you know, like Uncharted or something like that, where, you know, no, no, you want like every single little thing. Whereas for this, you kind of want to say, well, if, if these were wrinkled, you've got two wrinkles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> put them, choose wisely. Where yeah. You yeah. Put How them. do you design with them? Yeah. 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 So those are, the, those are the, that's like the main stuff I'd sort of think of is you know, how can you kind of pose this, right? So it's like, so we see it a little bit better. Um, and again, I'd look at the po- like the, the last character we, we were showing last week about mm-hmm. from sort of Overwatch, you know, just how look at how they're actually posing that character. And there's probably a couple of angles where they're just not, they're not going to do that because mm-hmm. it's not going to show the character off the best. Um, yeah, so that's a, sort of like, you know, just a few tips. Um, yeah, I mean, we could sort of keep sort of talking about, you know, different things you could do to, to, to redraw it. But I really think that's the number one thing that's going to sort of hold it back is just, 
you know mm-hmm. <laughs> um there's some cool stuff going there i think it's really good that we kind of you know made it that big and we're kind of going that that sort of you know that distance i think that's working well yeah and i think like some of the rendering stuff's looking really cool right yeah like some of the yeah the the arm you did looks awesome um yeah i just i'm kind of like with tim where i think there's just that big thing sticking out you know it's kind of like not reading that clear and it's re- i think like one of the things is all of a sudden you got this foreshortening <laughs> so it's just really hard mm-hmm. to do so yeah if you kind of like yeah if you yeah just i think that this is one of those things where like i tell like digital painting students all the time when we're doing like you know kind of landscapes and big vast environments it's not always something you want to hear but it's like mm-hmm. what what tim's done here is like you know this stuff is always kind of like the more important part to like you mm. learning and progressing yeah and like rendering like stuff up to like final is we can do that any old time basically yep. and you just learn rendering from rendering yeah like there's no yeah it, it's sort of like the rendering bit is the easiest bit but i feel like mm. sometimes when you're starting out it's the bit you chase the most yeah it's like you want to get oh i gotta get this rendering gotta get it rendering and stuff but totally i actually feel like the bit you need to chase the most at the start is like kind of just the design stuff and getting that working and then once you get that working and stuff then you can really start like taking that rendering to the next level but yeah what happens is then you're rendering something that you're really happy with yeah like and always telling students that if you start with a good base then you just build up from that base right yeah and you did one of these things ethan which like i I tell people to do paint all the time the worst feeling is getting something like 80 percent done and then going like I have to redo this whole goddamn thing. Yes, that's it's because that you feeling. just like pull it apart and you're like, how do I fix this? And like Tim said, then you're chasing kind of all these elements that are going yeah. on. So I actually think like Ethan with this is like you should just go like right flat colors. no more or like just no more on this yeah. and just kind of like be like okay let's just move let, like let's do the next character or, in this group or whatever or right? or just like redraw it. Do you know what I mean? Because I think also that that is that danger of sort of saying like oh I spent all this time I've got to save that. Um, you know, it, it's if you can do three characters a day, like, do you know what I mean? It, it doesn't really matter how mm-hmm. rendered they are. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? The more, the better. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you should be afraid of kind of just doing it again. You know, be like, oh, just draw that again. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's fine. There's, yeah. there's no problem with that. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean you failed. I think that's if you're doing concept design is like drawing it again is not failure. Like yeah, yeah, you yeah. still got paid yep. yesterday yep. for drawing it yep. wrong, right? Yep. Like that's the process. Mm-hmm um and and it, and it's uh i think the more you get attached to that the you know what i mean what i'd say is i'd say if you redraw it again probably what will happen is you will automatically remember and redo the things that worked really well mm-hmm. and maybe you'll forget some of the other stuff and maybe you'll forget a couple of things that were working but then you can go back and sort of check mm-hmm. um but just redraw it you know what i mean people that's what people want to see is like that what does that character look like from behind what do they mm-hmm. look like you know from a different angle you know that's yeah. it's not a big deal right mm-hmm. it's not a big like oh just redraw it you know and you know n- no one's sort of necessarily asking for like incremental paint overs of of the same thing do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? like it's however you want to do it um so i think like i think <clears throat> ethan you did an awesome job and i think you kind of like you know tim gave you sort of the changes and you did them yeah and, you no, gave cool. it go, and there's stuff that's like really working heaps better than, yep. than last week so if you want to kind of keep going with this i would say yeah just try like just try another pose, you know, try a different mm-hmm. angle or something. Be like, are the cameras from this side yep. this time or whatever? Or, or try another and, character that's, yeah, in the same yeah, world yeah. where you're trying to push it. Yeah. Um, but it's like, you know, like Tyler was saying where, you know, he'll go over to some 3D, mod- 3D model and they're modeling his thing up. And it's like, how did you, you know, here's <laughs> this, this little sketch line yeah. thing. Like, how did yeah. you make it? And it's like, well, I feel like if you communicate what, like the feel of what you want. And to a certain degree, you can inspire the people you're working with. Mm-hmm. You know, not everyone's looking for super you know polished rendered mm-hmm. stuff most of the time when you do it rendered is for promotional purposes or mm-hmm. you know like if you look at overwatch and you look at all that promo art like that's not their concept art yeah you know there's a whole bunch of stuff mm-hmm. behind that and i say that like with the looking at that big monster hunter book you know everyone looks at oh here's the you know the final rendered things and then yeah you look at the back and there's a hundred pages of just rough as gust sketches yeah, yeah. you yeah. know where people are just working it out yeah, you know? yeah. and, and yeah. that's fine that's a lot of the actual process mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm um yeah so just don't worry about that. i mean rendering it up is cool it, it looks good you know yeah, so yeah. if you can do it it's really yeah. important if you can't it is a bit of a bummer you know people will be like oh now we can't yeah. we can't use you to help present the idea but 
don't get don't get worried if yeah yeah i think like ethan should be really like should mm. be really happy about how it's come together right mm-hmm. and then it's just like we're saying there's there's those things going on but just don't stress about it just do another one and do kind of one. like get yep. the, and another you know, one get, and another one because yeah. hey guess yeah. what just keep going if you want to be a character designer <laughs> um you just can't have an issue with redrawing the same thing yeah. or redrawing you know like new one new one new one it's you know i, I often see that you know, like I've been in scenarios where I'm probably in a situation where more of the stuff I'm doing is going to make it into the game than most people are going to be in a mm-hmm. situation. And still, at least 80% of every single thing I draw is just like, Bloom. yeah, yeah, next one, next one, <laughs> wrong, <laughs> wrong, 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 or like, no, we yeah. just, that's, oh, it's pretty cool, but yeah, yeah. what else? You know, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And then we go back and pick the first one. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. that's the job, right? Yeah. It's just like iterate, 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 draw mm-hmm. the same thing, draw yeah. something slightly different. Yeah. You know, and you, I, I feel like there should be a sense of the more you can cultivate the right attitude towards that, like sense of fun, mm-hmm. the better. Which mm-hmm. I'm not suggesting Ethan's not doing. I'm just yeah, kind of yeah. saying, like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, don't don't yeah. sweat out. Yeah. Don't don't sweat it. Just yep. draw more, have fun. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. So awesome stuff, guys. Um, once again, thank you for you know contributing your art for you know um, feedback and you know paint mm-hmm. overs and all that kind of stuff. Um, so like always, each week, um, you know whoever's whoever is. Um, whoever is kind of contributing the art to the stream um, will email you guys a link for a digital download which you can choose any one you want to and um, yeah you can have that as a bit of a prize for for just uh, being on the stream mm-hmm. all right um, so that's that's pretty much it for this week and um, we're going to wrap it up now and we'll be back next week thanks to Tyler for yeah for thanks Skyping to Tyler in. that was awesome. super super yep. late at night yep <laughs> I think it, when we finally left it was 3 30 <laughs> in the morning yeah um so hope and we're he, gonna yeah hope we're gonna he wakes up and feels okay yeah. and we're gonna try and do more of that um <laughs> yeah in in the weeks to come so get more people on more guests and things so if there's anyone that you kind of like to to speak to um or have us speak to you know please um Please sort of you know drop it in the in the comment section and things like that. That would be um, mm-hmm. really awesome. Um, somebody asked if we accept like three D artwork for critique. Yeah, for sure. And we're planning to have some three D guys on here as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, what, whatever you've got, um, you know, please like send in if it's class homework, if it's personal stuff, you know, if it's things you're like really, I, you know, I'm just starting this out or, or whatever. Just you know, Here, here's my study. I did it. I don't get it. I yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, what's yeah, wrong? Sure. Like, yeah. you know, what would you do yeah. differently? I don't know. Like, yeah. whatever. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're like thinking about, and sort of whatever keeps you up at night, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And keep letting us know what kind of dis- discussion topics you'd like to talk about, um, and we'll keep trying to, um, you know, talk about those each week. All mm-hmm. right. So thanks, guys, and we'll uh, see you around soon. Thanks. See ya. <laughs>